Hello, gamers, and welcome to today's semi-final matchup of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest Randomizer. We have T versus Fred. Um, they'll be doing all they'll be doing all their matches. Uh, so there's gonna be a break in between matches. As with as is normal, uh, with the Mystic Quest Randomizer, we have standard logic. So players are supposed to find the three different coins to access the different elemental regions of the world. Um, they can short circuit that logic uh, through the use of pressed warps. Uh, we do have save the crystals turned on, so our players do need to beat all four elemental fiends, light all four crystals in order to get their sky coin, which will allow them access into the Doom Castle proper uh, to face the Dark King. Uh, I am Hatox, and I am joined by Ekamot uh, on the tracking side. Trackers are the MVPs of any broadcast team because they always know what's going on and they keep your commentators looking well informed. All right, we'll be getting underway very shortly. Uh, both streamers are about to start. Both streamers hoping to find some very quick progression um, that will take them into an easy uh, area. All right, and here we go. All right, so it looks like uh, we are starting with bombs. So bombs is our starting weapon. Uh, Fred very quickly into the forest of town. Uh, T finding some brownies um, to fight before getting um, the old man check. Fortunately, our bomb's taking care of all of that uh, heavy lifting. Getting the dragon claw from the old man. Uh, Fred finding the jumbo bombs in Foresta. Uh, so basically upgrading his, his bomb to uh, level 2 right there. Uh, but with no axe, um, the, the rest of the level forest is going to be off limits to our players. They're going to have to come back with an axe to chop down those trees uh, and gain access and do all of the rest of the uh, item checks in there. So we do have brown box shuffle turned on, which means that quest items can be found in any chest. Um, if there is a quest item in that chest, it is the, the chest itself is turned red. Uh, see our players recruiting uh, Tristan in the sand temple and moving on getting the item getting the river coin so both players now having a river coin uh, looks like neither of them are bothering to stick around and quest out the rest of the dungeon um, they are heading to the next location Uh, that location looks like it's going to be a blue battlefield. Okay, so a little bit of note on the battlefields uh, for our first time viewers. In the vanilla game, all the battlefields are the same color uh, and their reward is always the same. So you go to battlefield one, you're always going to get a reward. Um, if you're either going to get the experience, the gold, or the quest item reward. Whatever reward that battlefield is supposed to give you, it'll give it to you all the time. In the randomizer, uh, we have turned on uh, quest re uh, battlefield rewards uh, shuffle. So in order to be a little bit fairer to the players, the color changes. So if it's going to give you a quest item as a reward, you get a blue battlefield. And in that battlefield, they just got the Cupid Locket, uh, which is going to be one of the items that we really want to see uh, later on in the game to give us a lot of status protection. Green battlefields in the randomizer indicate a gold reward of gold, and gray battlefields in the randomizer uh, indicate a reward of experience. Mm. 
Uh, also, the battlefield count uh, has changed. Uh, normally, it's a set of 10 battles per battlefield. Uh, Fred getting his Dragon Claw now uh, from the old man. T getting the Thunder Rock um, out of out of the blue battlefield. So a lot of a lot of Go Mode items are uh, really showing up uh, early. And it looks like T is gonna dive Bone Dungeon um, with his kit, which is actually a pretty pretty uh, expansive kit. He'll be able to do some damage. Nope. Oh, T forgot uh, to get the the river coin out of there. Okay, so T forgot to pick up uh, the river coin from Tristan, but now he's got it. And he'll be moving on. So both our players now pretty much uh, in the same spot. Uh, getting both of them will get that steel helm out of Focus Tower third floor and move into the Firebird region. Uh, Fred stopping by to talk to some jellies in the battlefield. Uh, T picking up Ruben. He's gonna do all the fire. My guess is he's gonna do all the Firebird checks. Um, get the Tristam 2 item, which is a Steel Sword. Still looking for an axe, though. Uh, and then he'll come back with Ruben and take on the battlefields. Uh, they are going to need some gold as well. Um, the All three towns have a vendor that sells a single item. And in Fireburg, it's a little bit more expensive at 500 gold. And with whatever excess gold tea will have later on, um, you'll probably choose to buy some seeds, which are the items that replenish all of your magic charges. Since our players are really just clearing out battlefields right now, uh, this will give us a chance to talk about what we need for go mode. We kind of went on it briefly. Um, so our runners will need the Thunder Rock, the Captain's Cap, and the Mobius Crest uh, in order to complete the game. Logically, they need the Sand River and Sun coins, but they can Crest Warp uh, to the different regions as well and, and beat that logic. They will get the Sky Coin after defeating their fourth boss. That's also a required item. They need the Dragon Claw, which they already have. Uh, and they need the Mega Grenades. Uh, which is the level 3 bomb upgrade. And Fred getting his Steel Sword now uh, from Tristam. In addition to all of these items, um, they need any sword and any axe in order to beat some of the different dungeons. Uh, for instance, when they go to the Aquaria area, they're going to need a sword of some type uh, to activate the statues. When they go to Pazuzu's tower, they're going to need an axe of any type uh, in order to flip the switches to lock the elevator in place. Fred going over to the vendor and buying uh, his multi key. T gets a T gets a the great axe out of the battlefield to the left. Uh, also picking up his multi key as well. Uh, our runner's taking that multi key now to the hermit's hideaway 
in Fireburg and getting the sand coin from the hermit. Uh, T right there picking up 12 seeds. Uh, that should last him for the remainder of, of this uh, this journey here. Don't have any magic yet to speak of, so our runners are uh, looking for either Flare or White. Those are the two wizard magic spells that will deal damage to the Dark King. Anything short of that, we're going to be looking at a rather, rather long Dark King fight. Dark King fights that go long tend to go badly. You, you want a short as possible Dark King fight. Alright, T uh, using that sand coin and heading off to Aquaria, he's going to trade Ruben in for Phoebe. And immediately seeing a blue battlefield and diving in. So we know where T will be for the next minute or so. Alright, so after after many, many rounds of battles, um, T using Phoebe to basically just sweep with a Thunder spell in that battlefield, getting a Sun Coin. Um, so at this point, uh, what's probably going to happen, T is going to clear out whatever remaining battlefields he needs to clear out in Aquaria. He'll get the Phoebe one item, probably trade Phoebe in for another, for another character, um, and then go get uh, Phoebe 2 over in Windia, uh, which is access to the Sun Point. So what I mean by that right there is character uh, your ally characters in this game um, have two phases. So basically you pick them up, um, they're the first phase of that character. They have set stats, they have set spells, set skills, and then you, you'll eventually find where to get their item. In Phoebe's case, it's going to be in Wintry Cave. Uh, in the vanilla game, your character drops down, uh, falls off the cliff literally, uh, and Phoebe comes to their rescue. In this case, Phoebe just says, good job, thanks for not being a fool. Here's an Aegis Shield, which is another major safety item for our characters in this game. Can't miss that shield, it's completely on path. So the item that Phoebe gives you is randomized in the game, and in this particular seed, you, you just got an Aegis Shield, which is like the best possible thing you can get right now. Uh, now that he's gotten the Phoebe 1 item, what'll happen is T will look to trade in Phoebe somewhere, uh, because you can't upgrade the character when they're in your party. They have to be out of your party to move to their next location. Uh, T also raiding, raiding Phoebe's house to get a cure spell. Uh, we're gonna check the Aquaria vendor while we're here, and we're gonna find that she is selling a Mobius Crest. Good lord. Uh, so... That's actually gonna be really helpful for T right now, because... T is most likely now going to speed his way to Fireburg. Trade Phoebe for Ruben because we didn't get Ruben's item yet, so we know he's still in Fireburg. He's still at his house. Uh, and from Fireburg, there is a there is a Mobius Crest Warp that will take you straight to Windia, and the Windia Inn is where we're going to find Phoebe too. And while we're in Windia, uh, T will be able to do all of the Windia town checks as well. Yep. 
So Fred finished that. He got his Sun Coin. He got his Mobius Crest. Um, now he's getting his Aegis Shield. Uh, he is going to dive the the upper uh, floors of Wintry Cave. Uh, just to what he did. Very quickly shift through the the front and back Wintry Cave, and then head back out. Uh, T stopping off in the Fireberg area to do some Volcano checks. Uh, not finding anything in the right side or the right back of Volcano. Nothing on the left side. He's not gonna check um, the Medusa path. Uh, he is going to fade that check and dip out. All right, so Fred doing a soft reset there. Um, this is actually a faster way to get out of Winry Cave. Rather than having to walk the path all the way back, um, he didn't find anything in the back. There's only brown chests there. So a quick reset, uh, and then he can just speed his way out. So this is interesting. We have, uh, let's see, T is doing the volcano right now. Uh, sorry, the mine. Uh, Fred is... Fred is taking Phoebe to the bone dungeon. He's gonna full clear bone dungeon, it looks like, at this point now. Uh, T finding a Moon Helm. This is going to help him out greatly uh, if he decides to take on the Jin right now with Ruben. Um, the Jin has a bunch of fire attacks in his script. Um, and with that fire resistance, um, T will only be taking 50% damage uh, from those fire attacks. Meanwhile, on Fred's side, uh, Fred not really finding anything in Bone Dungeon. Bone Dungeon is a very quick check. He's gonna get all the way uh, to Flamorous. Don't think we saw anything in the back of Flamorous. Uh, life will take care of Flamorous. A uh, very quick shot with life. Flamorous being weak to life, uh, he will take... Basically, life is a one-hit uh, KO spell. Uh, when used on an enemy, if they are not resistant to it, and your whoever's casting it, their level has to be higher than the enemy's level. So you can you you can life flamerous with any character except Tristan one and Kaylee one. A charm claw in the back uh, where flamerous was hiding, uh, not going to be useful to our runners. They already have a dragon claw, so. A Claw being a level 2 weapon, they already have the level 3 Dragon Claw. Uh, so there's no downgrading um, in the game or in the randomizer. You just simply keep your upgraded weapon. Uh, the sprite says Charm Claw right now. Uh, once he switches off of that, it'll reset back to Dragon. So, so T's Jin fight is, I, I know it looks really bad um, on screen, uh, but this Jin fight is kind of interesting mainly because 
Jin's uh, attack scripts, uh, his his move seems to he seems to have been shuffled amongst uh, some of the regular enemies. Uh, so he's hitting with some blind spells. He's hitting with some uh, with some physical attacks. Uh, none, of, none of his normal fire attacks. T taking an unfortunate death there. Um, but Fred picked up Tristan and is making the play into Windia, uh, getting the flare spell uh, in the warp to the ship dock. So this is the play I was talking about like 10 minutes earlier. Um, where basically you're just trading out characters, trying to get uh, as fast as you can to either Phoebe 2 or Ruben 2, mainly because they have uh, attack spells uh, that will help you get through your battles faster. Fred, Fred, let's see. Fred used the Thunder Rock uh, to activate Rainbow Bridge uh, to go to Spencer's place. I think he's looking for a few more items here. We have a Mount Gale check, so you can you can um, scout the first item, which is basically free in Mount Gale. Fred, I think you could have uh, Dragon Clawed your way over there, my friend. So he's gonna find this uh, red chest. Uh, he's and, and get rewarded with a fire spell, uh, and then he's gonna be on his way out. Uh, T finishing his Jin fight. Uh, no chests in the back of Jin, but Ruben gives you an item after clearing the Jin fight. Uh, normally you would get the mega grenades at that point, but today you're getting the captain's cap. So Jin is hard required. Uh, in this sea, because Captain's Cap is a required go mode item. So, so this is gonna be this is gonna be a little bit rough for uh, Fred here, because Fred made the, the speed play to get Phoebe, uh, and he's gonna have a very easy time clearing. Probably nine tenths of the game, maybe even like nine point five tenths of the game. But he's not gonna have a captain's cap, and it's gonna be a matter of when he finally goes to the mine uh, to get that cap. Up. And he's gonna have to have Ruben in his party to get that cap. So just because you beat Jin doesn't give you the cap. You have to have the character, in this case Ruben, to get the item. Same thing in Winry Cave, if you don't go there with Phoebe, well you can't get an item from Phoebe, she's not there to give you the item. Alright, so let's see. Fred now at Ice Pyramid, clearing out that battlefield right before it, getting a charm accessory, so he's not gonna need that. That'll disappear in a few moments. Uh, he also has a magic mirror with him. I think that was the Windy of Vendor item. I don't remember where we got that from. Okay, Windy of Vendor item. So, in Mystic Quest, there are no random battles. Every battle that you get into um, is because you uh, either entered a battlefield or because you interacted with, a, with an enemy sprite on the map. Uh, however, in Ice Pyramid and in the Volcano, there is a gimmick where it hides the enemies from you unless you have a certain item. So on the Ice Pyramid, you don't see the enemies um, before you run into them unless you have the Magic Mirror. So with, the, with this mirror, with this item, Fred is going to be able to just speed through the Ice Pyramid uh, and dodge all the enemies that are not physically like blocking his path.
Uh, meanwhile, in, in the Windia area, uh, T is clearing out this battlefield right here. Uh, and basically on display, we get to see why you want uh, Phoebe to... Uh, both our runners using Phoebe 2 to just use the her uh, wizard magic of white to just blast through the enemies and whatever white doesn't finish out uh, T has flare so T can just like also melt the, uh, these enemies uh, Tree wither for sale in Windia. Okay, so T gets his tree wither. I don't recall Fred going there to get it so this might be a double dip on Fred's side to get Tree Wither from, from Windia. Although at some point Fred will open up his item menu um, to use a seed on his players and we'll be able to scout uh, what items he has uh, through that. Making his way through Ice Pyramid, um, not finding anything of note. Uh, T also doing the Mountain Gale check, uh, gets his fire spell. Um, chat, we are not going to see that fire spell get used in battle, unfortunately, um, when they have so, so much better magic to use in the form of Flare. All right, uh, Fred, now at the Ice Golem fight in Ice Pyramid. Uh, this is the one chance for Ben, our main character, to be the hero uh, and actually out damage uh, through the use of Flare. Ice Golem being weak to Flare will take uh, double the damage uh, and go down in basically two rounds. So our score right now is uh, red to uh, T0. Uh, T still not lighting any crystals yet, but like like a lot of us uh, in chat have realized, <laughs> it's all gonna be a matter of when Fred gets uh, to the mine with Ruben. Uh, Fred getting the Battle Axe, the Level 2 Axe, and the Gemini Crest out of Ice Palace 4th Floor. So, no exit spell. Fred cannot just warp out of Ice Pyramid. He has to walk out the long way. But he does have some item checks he does need to go through. So he did, um, as, you, as you go through Ice Pyramid, you can actually scout most of the items um, that are off path uh, through your walk to the, to the Golem. And Fred is using that knowledge that he gained uh, to know which stairways he needs to go up in order to get to the items um, that he scouted. Uh, so T is right outside the ice pyramid. They will most likely high five each other um, as they enter and exit the area. Fred gets a blizzard spell. He won't be using that either. Uh, and that's the last item in, that we saw in Ice Pyramid, so he, he's coming out now. Yeah, so for, for those of us new to the game, um, in Ice Pyramid, uh, we've modified it a little bit from the from the vanilla game so that you have a faster path uh, to the Ice Golem on the first floor maze. But there, if you watch T's side, basically what happened was he, he scouted the first floor manually. He went to the left, he went to the right, he went to the center, and then he is now on path to the Ice Golem. Um, those are the checks on the first floor that you cannot scout on path, you have to do it manually. But then you see him kind of like walking through that second floor in a weird pattern. Uh, that's because you can scout the rest of the checks in Ice Pyramid from that path. So the second, you can see all the checks on the second floor right there. Um, and then he's gonna go into the left side room and see what he needs to see on the third floor. 
uh, we're just gonna realize that he has a check there. Uh, Fred, uh, now in Firebird, um, he has made an, like, he has made a very interesting galaxy brain sized play here. He's traded Phoebe 2 in for Ruben. Uh, and he's doing the North Mind check, so he's gotten his Moon Helm now. Uh, and he's gonna be set up now to go on and take the Jin. That, that's gonna be huge because any lead that T may have gotten from getting that captain's cap uh, is gonna evaporate here now. And Fred is also at a much higher level. Um, he has Flare, which is not gonna do a whole lot of damage to the Jin because the Jin is uh, resistant to fire. Uh, but his fight against the Jin should just be that much easier. side um t doesn't have a magic mirror so he uh this is you're getting to see the slightly slower pa uh, walk through ice pyramid uh, because he's running into a lot of enemies that he can just kind of dodge and avoid um, but he now is in his ice golem fight uh, this will also go very fast both their runners having flare Alright chat, a little bit of trivia here. What enemy has blind spells and beak? Because whatever it is, that's the enemy later on um, that will have things like flare, oh uh, not flare, uh, fire pillar, flame sweep, dragon cut. So the version of uh, Enemizer that we have on for this flag set is Simple Swap. So basically, you pick two enemies, uh, whether they are bosses or not, unless you are the Dark King. The Dark King is excluded from this. And they swap skills. Like, 100% skill for skill. So somewhere out there, there is a bird that will be roasting us with fire and a sword. Fred is out of the mine, uh, and he is in Fireburg. He is heading to the Mobius Crest Warp, which tells me that he's not going to bother with upgrading or trying to even uh, upgrade Ruben here. He's just going to go to Windia. Uh, he's going to get Phoebe too, and that will be his party probably for the rest of the game. Phoebe too also has a higher magic power than Ruben too. So her white spell will deal more damage and effectively kill more enemies in the Lava Dome. Uh, whereas Ruben 2 will probably need two casts of white uh, in order to take down some of the larger baddies. Especially if our enemies uh, roll high on their stats.
Uh, Fred doing even less of a volcano check than uh, T. Really just looking at that first area, um, right and left, and not seeing anything, not heading to the back. Uh, there are one, two, three, there are four checks for items in the bat. Um, but really at this point, all we're looking for is the Mega Grenades. We have everything else we need. Well, life. We'd like to see the life spell at some point. That will make... That, that is a huge safety that we're going to need for the Dark King. Uh, Fred walking through Lava Dome, doing some item checks, uh, scouting the entire right, right and bottom sides, and now he is on to the left. This is the path to the Lava Dome switch. So the gimmick in Lava Dome is that in order to get to the boss fight, the Hydra fight, uh, you need to open the door. Uh, Fred is on the path to the switch that opens the door, and lying down, in path is the Gaia armor. his required battles hits the switch he'll be heading to the hydra now uh t also in lava dome heading down the left side so he too uh will be doing the switch path uh very sh very very shortly uh and then getting on to the hydra fight uh, apollo helm for fred also on path t getting his gaia armor don't know it but they are actually uh, very very close to each other um the only difference is that uh fred has already completed the bone dungeon so he is gonna have to do this at some point um before going to windia uh, and i say before going to windia only because they have pretty much everything they need except mega grenades so it just makes more sense to go to Bone Dungeon first, and then take the path to Gwyndia. Uh, the Treasury has three items, the Arrow Spell, the Life Spell, and the Quake Spell. Uh, and then outside the Treasury, we have Heal. So, Heal is not a great substitute for life, um, but it can, it, it'll get rid of status effects. So if we can't get life, Heal is, well we already have life anyway. Um, heal would have been the next best option, but we don't need to worry about it anymore. So we, and as far as armor goes, we have a full kit. Uh, so we are not looking for anything but the Mega Grenades. Salamanders are kind of beefy today. Living through a blast from White from Phoebe. Uh, T now headed down into the treasury. He is also going to find um, the Hydra's Hoard of Goods. I'm telling you, this, this Hydra was, was, was quite loaded in a previous lifetime because that's one, three, five items uh, pretty much in the room right before his hideout. All 
Alright, so both our runners are uh, pretty much in the same spot. Fred in the Hydra fight already, T not very far behind. Um, let's see. So it looks like Hydra has all of his uh, vanilla attacks here. We've seen Paralyze and Poison Breath come out. Uh, fortunately, uh, Fred has resistance on Ben for pretty much every status effect in the game, except instant death. Phoebe, not so much. Uh, unfortunately, in this game, you can't change status resistances on your allied characters. There is a bug in the vanilla game <laughs> that will do that, um, but it is patched out here in the randomizer. Alright, so Fred onto phase 2 of the Hydra fight, and we're starting to see some new attacks come out from Hydra. That's Thunder we just saw. Uh, but both our both uh, characters have resistance to Thunder right now, Thunder being a wind spell. Uh, and, uh, and then onto phase 3. So, one thing with bosses is when they drop below 50% of their health, their attack script can change. Um, so, in Hydra's case, he drops his breath attacks, and he picks up um, his uh, heavy hitting single target attacks. Uh, so normally Thunder would just be absolutely devastating uh, to Ben and Ruben in the vanilla game. But because in the randomizer you can get items and characters out of sequence, uh, resistance to Thunder means um, not like four to 600 points of damage. Simply just, you know, in the mid hundreds. Uh, and Hydra being super thin on the back end, going straight from phase 3 to done. Uh, so that's crystal number 3 right there. And in the back, getting the noble armor. Already having the Gaia armor, so noble armor not necessary. And now it's all about where the mega grenades are. Ooh. T, uh, seeing some very unfortunate status effects there. I believe that was a stone breath that he took. Um, so, looks like Ben was knocked out and Ruben got stoned right there. Yes. I didn't want to talk about the stone breath, uh, from the Hydra. Uh, I... I give out the commentator's curse like no other. If I say Stone Breath, it's gonna appear on screen. So I was waiting for it to show up before I talked about it. So yes, in the in the uh, Hydra's list of attacks in the back end of the script, there is Stone Breath petrification. Phoebe is not resistant to petrification. And Petrify basically is treated like a death status. So if your runners are, if both characters are a combination of uh, KO or Petrify, um, the game ends, or the battle ends, and you can retry the battle from the beginning. Uh, Fred right now in Pazuzu's tower in the Windia section, doing what any other se uh, senior class runner would be doing, uh, which is basically treating the game like he's in go mode. Uh, he is aware that he is missing the Mega Grenades, but there's every chance that you could find the Mega Grenades in the tower. Oh, I, I thought I was about to get treated to some Mega Grenade action right there. So basically what Fred is going to do is it looks like he is going to full clear the tower uh, hoping to find the grenades on path and if not um, then we're going to start to get to see some of the more uh, adjacent checks we'll call them. Uh, also known as uh, this game's version of the Pendant Dungeons. Uh, 
Uh, P is still dueling it out with Hydra, but mm. Hydra is on his last legs here. Um, and that's, that's it. So... Uh, T will get his second crystal right there. We're gonna probably see him at this point dip Bone Dungeon and, and get the, get the crystal out of there. Uh, still behind Fred. But these Mega Grenades can be anywhere, and it's looking like they're not gonna be in the tower. So it's gonna be a matter of who checks the right spot first. Let's see. What would be the Mystic Quest equivalent? All right. Okay, chat. So this is where we get you involved. Many different games out there. We're gonna pick on Super Metroid right now and the Shock Tool check. What would the Mystic Quest equivalent of Shock Tool be? Uh, for those of us who are not familiar with Shock Tool, Shock Tool is an enemy in Super Metroid that basically helps build a, uh, clear out a path uh, for you to check one item. Uh, really, the only reason why in a randomizer you go to Shock Tool to do the check is you have to use the bathroom, maybe. So, or maybe maybe you need to like go and like grab some food. You're kind of hungry. Uh, but you don't want to waste time. So you go to Shock Tool, you bomb open the wall to let Shock Tool do his thing, and meanwhile you go do your thing. And by the time you come back, Shock Tool will probably have finished uh, digging the path for you. But you've got some time. You don't need to rush. You don't. You're, you're not in a hurry. All right. So T has the uh, tree wither. T is doing the Kaylee checks right now in Foresta and got the Wake Water. So this could be interesting. Because with no Mega Grenades, Wake Water is the only way into Spencer's place. Spencer in Aquaria could have the Mega Grenades. Oh, and chat, for those of you who are concerned that, that T doesn't have a partner right now, um, T has life, uh, and he has a high level. Uh, so as we talked about earlier with the Flamerous fight, um, T can life Flamerous. Um, Flamerous's attacks doing basically scratch damage at this point to T. Um, the, the fight will end in one round. It might even be a left-handed kill. Flamers might not get, in, get an attack off. Uh, meanwhile, Fred here in the Pazuzu fight. Uh, the Pazuzu fight is living proof of the fact that all birds are jerks. Pazuzu hits hard. Uh, he has multi-hit attacks. Uh, AoE attacks for you in the lingo. He has... Status effect attacks. T crits at a rather high rate, and after the fifth turn, he starts reflecting your magic. And Pazuzu here looking like he really wants to hit hard today, so we could be in for some entertainment. Fortunately, with both our characters having the life spell, um, the entertainment will be limited in nature. It it'll still be bad, but at least we've got some safeties. All right.
Alright, so Fred into phase 2 of the Pazuzu fight. Uh, Pazuzu's attack script largely doesn't change between phases 1, 2, and 3. Ooh, now into the third phase. This is good. Uh, see seeing a thin Pazuzu is always a it's always a good sign for your runner. Ooh, and a nice crit from Phoebe with the bow and arrows. Um, Suzu is a bird. He is weak to what they call shoot attacks in this game. Uh, shoot is a is treated as its own element, and he'll take double damage on a crit. He'll double that damage. So Suzu essentially just taking four x damage right there from that attack. Uh, that was a nice way to end the fight. Uh, T on Team Norma. Donating uh, five seconds of his time to free the girl so that she can go back to Grandpa Otto uh, over in India. But no exit spell, so we take the long walk out of the tower. Alright, Fred, where are we going? Where are the Mega Grenades? Alright, so it looks like we're gonna do a front-to-back clear. Um, so, we are in the Alive Forest. There are a bunch of checks on the floor of Alive Forest. There are also three Crest Warps. We've got two of the Crests, so we can do two of them. Uh, so we're gonna see Fred here. Oh, he... he... He skipped the left side check right there that is uh, next to the Libra Crest Warp. I'm sure it was nothing. I'm sure he saw it and I just didn't see it. Uh, that, that's why uh, Fred is a senior runner on a very uh, valued uh, opponent here and I am, I am on the microphone. So nothing in a live forest floor. Into the tree. The tree, tree first floor has the mask. Um, well, we haven't seen the back of the volcano yet, so we might that mask could come in useful. Uh, and Fred deciding that he's going to climb the tree. So on the second floor, um, in the back of the second floor, uh, there is a chest whose door access only opens after beating the boss of the tree. Um, because we can scout that from the map, we know that that check is a brown box. We do not need to beat Gidra today. I suppose that would be the equivalent of the, uh, of the shock school check. The long path to Gidra. And if Gidra is cranky, it could be a long battle. Uh, but there are a lot of boxes. Uh, there are a lot of chests in the tree. We're getting treated to a, a cornucopia of items here. Uh, so as far as mathematical precision goes, it's worth it to check the tree because there are a lot of item chances in there. So you have plenty of outs. Um, but it is a time commitment. You could do the equivalent of several dungeons worth of checks in one tree. So it's really just a matter of where am I going to put my time. Okay, so okay, so that's interesting. Fred Fred pulls an elixir out of the tree. Uh and what this means is now Kaylee 2 can be in play. So we saw the Kaylee 1 item already, that was the Wake Water. Um, so with Kaylee, after the Minotaur fight, Kaylee gets poisoned. You need to take her an Elixir. 
And by giving her the elixir, you get Kaylee too. Uh, and then you can you can ditch Kaylee too at that point. Uh, you'll pick her back up in the Windia Inn. Um, but before that, you will get a second item. Uh, yes, that is correct. Tree Wither, yes. So Fred still needs to buy his Tree Wither from Windia uh, before he can use the elixir on Kaylee. is uh, doing the last of his elevator shutoffs here uh, so that the bird can't escape and now he is in his Pazuzu fight. Uh, so we didn't get a chance to talk about it earlier but basically the gimmick in uh, Pazuzu's tower is Pazuzu as a bird rides an elevator. Lazy boy. Um, you think he just fly between the floors but nope uses the elevator. Anyway, um, in order to stop his movement, you need to flip switches on the even-numbered floors to lock the elevator in place between the floors. And literally, it's between the floors. So if Pazuzu ends up on an even-numbered floor that is not six, the elevator can still scoot its way to an odd-numbered floor um, before, you, before you lock it in place. So Fred doing manual attacks here on the uh, Black Oozes. Two enemies in the game, the Beholder and the Ooze, uh, have natural magic resistance. Uh, so that is why Fred is not just blasting his way through with white. Alright, so that's that's all the tree. We've made it all the way to the fifth floor. We don't need to fight Ghidra uh, because we know that there's nothing behind him. And we've got nothing. And we've got no exit spell. So we get to see the beautiful artwork of the tree twice. Once on the way up, once on the way down. And the nice bright greenness that is the alive forest. Alright chat, where are we going next? Alright, so... So on the list of options that we have, all of the different pendant dungeons that we'll call them. Um, a live forest, you can put a circle and a line through it right there. Uh, Fred doing some rope bridge checks. I don't know if we've seen this yet. I don't think T did this earlier, but we, now, now there are two checks in the rope bridge and we've seen both and there is nothing. Uh, Fred heading to Doom Castle Basement, doing a save before that. I think he's been here before. We saw T do this earlier. Um, nothing there, so quick reset instead of having to walk back out. Alright, we're gonna see a Cage Temple check uh, comboed in with the Mobius Crest to get to the Light Temple. We saw one brown box. That's the only brown box worth seeing, so we're out. Um, Alright, is Fred gonna remember to buy something from the vendor? Nope. Alright. Uh, T finishes his Pazuzu fight with uh, fewer problems than he did with the Hydra fight, getting his Sky Coin, uh, but now in the same boat as Fred. No Mega Grenades, no Go Mode, no fun. Um, Fred taking the mask to the volcano, so he's gonna be able to see all of the items now. Uh, not items. He'll be able to see all of the enemies uh, in the interior of the volcano.
Uh, chat. Hello, chat. Do the battlefield still have things hidden? Um, no. There are five um, blue battlefields, I believe, and we've seen them all. So those are the so the blue battlefields in the game have the quest items uh, because we have battlefield reward shuffle turned on. So we've already we've already cleared all of that out. Really, it's the item is going to be in a dungeon. So well, there's a lot of places this item can be. Uh, Fred, clearing. Fred, Fred is gonna full clear the volcano, including Medusa. Um, and Medusa immediately coming out with the confusion status effects. Uh, Phoebe doing a really excellent job of shooting herself with her own bow and arrow. Um, so... See, even when you're kitted out to the, to the max, this fight can still go sideways. Uh, T is voting to take his uh, wake water to Aquaria uh, and do literally the walk of shame uh, to go visit Spencer. And he gets a Libra Crest. Uh, so this Libra Crest uh, he can use in the Libra Temple to do a to do a item check, and this this item check is incentivized. Uh, we have. Incentivized NPC and uh, battlefields. So the old man will give us something. The old man gives us the Venus key. T is probably not thrilled at seeing that. Uh, why did we not check the red chest to the old man? Well, we didn't have the Venus key. Uh, the chest next dispenser is locked by the Venus key. Uh, T just got it, literally. Getting his exit spell. Use the exit spell, buddy. Getting Meteor, no help. Oh, uh, we have fought all the bosses that are fire resistant already. So T will literally have to go back to Aquaria. This, if this is a required double dip for the Mega Grenades, we are going to lose it here. Fred just slugging it through the volcano. Uh, now on the path to the back. Come on, Mega Grenades! Oh boy! Alright, and Fred getting a white spell in the back of the volcano, no help. He already has Flare, that's all he's gonna need. Ah, uh, oh man. Chat, um, if I had a required double dip via the Walk of Shame to Spencer to get the Mega Grenades, I can just tell you that there would probably be some not nice words coming, like, there, it, it would definitely be some uh, PG-13 plus content coming out. Uh, yes, T, thank you. You have to visit Spencer's cave first from the back to, to free the ocean. So chat, uh, you throw a bomb in the cave to release basically an ocean's worth of water, uh, which moves the ship from the ledge. But that was interesting because the sprite at the ship dock was still there, uh, even though we hadn't freed the ship yet. Alright, me, meanwhile on Fred's side, Fred is uh, full, basically full clearing the Windia section. Um, having done all the temple checks and the forest uh, and the tree, we're now doing Mount Gale. Um, this is kind of rough, we went from... We went from Windia to Firebird, back to Windia. Uh, this is... So let's see, let's let's review chat. Let's talk about this item chain. 
you had to buy the tree wither from the Aquario vendor to go to Kaylee 1 to get the wake water to go to Spencer to get the Libra Crest to go to Libra Temple to get the Venus Key to go back to Spencer's place and get the Mega Grenades out of the chest that's next to him. I just want to shout out uh, Hebinks, uh, one of our tourney admins here, uh, also in the chat. Hebinks, thank you for an excellent seed. This is going to be a memorable one. I haven't seen an item chain that long in Mystic Quest for a while. Alright, so Fred finishing the Dulahan fight, not finding anything worthwhile. Um, oh man, this is rough. I think, I think we're seeing a little bit of panic mode. I think we're seeing a little bit of like, what, what's left? Well, well, in the Aquaria section, there are, what, one two, three checks we haven't seen yet, uh, as far as dungeon goes. Um, Squidite in the back of Winery Cave, and then two checks in Falls Basin. Um, the Behind the Waterfall check, and the uh, Behind the Crab check. Uh, meanwhile, T has cleared the uh, Captain's Mac ship, taken the ship from Captain Mac, uh, apparently, all you have to do is wear a captain's cap, and you can you can have a ship, folks. No cap, no ship, and he's in the Doom Castle basement. He'll be walking up the stairs to go fight the Dark King very shortly. I mean, this is just really unfortunate, like, it's, it's really just bad luck on Fred's side because we saw him make some really great plays, um, but chat, I mean, like, this is what happens, uh, you, one item can be the difference between a re, a really fast run and a, a slog through full clearing the entire game. Because Fred will probably literally full clear the entire game short of the Kaylee 2 check. He might even do the Kaylee 2 check. Uh, meanwhile, T in his uh, Dark King fight here. I know I've missed a little bit. I'm, I'm assuming that this is attack at least number 4. Okay, he's at... That's attack number 10. Because if he's at level 20, that's 5 charges of flare. He just had to use a seed. Um, so we've seen 10 attacks come out. And Dark King is still in phase 1. 11 with Phoebe. That was 12. 13 now. This is a thick phase 1. bust out my tally sheet here. 14. So that was 14 attacks um, of roughly 1900 damage each. Give or take. Alright, now on to phase 2. That's 2 attacks so far. Three attacks. Four. This is 
We're, we're gonna turn this into my counting stream now. Um, five. Uh, now we're seeing some life strats come out. So, if you- both characters have life, if you do a cross life where the life- the, your characters cast life on each other, there's literally no way to die. I mean, it's basically like a full heal on both characters. Uh, six. Alright, so that was 9. Okay, so... So chat, um... So the way bosses work in this flag set, bosses are anywhere between uh, vanilla and up to 1.5 or 150% of their vanilla hit point stats. Um... The Dark King in Vanilla has... Ooh, this could possibly go badly. Ooh, that's a very unfortunate wipe there on T's side. Uh... Fred is still hunting for the Mega Grenades. Fred still needs to go to uh, Windia and buy, buy that tree with her. I do see him going back to India though, so this could be good. There we go. Chat, Fred is not going to be a happy gamer in just a mo in, in a few moments. Alright, meanwhile, let's let's go back to talking about math. So, um... Dark King... 40,000 40, hit points. Um, can be a maximum of 150% of his stats. So, Dark King could roll as high as 60,000 hit points. So let's do some math. We saw... 15... Plus nine. We saw twenty-four hits uh, of about nineteen hundred damage, plus or minus, and the Dark King was still very much in phase three. Now the phases, um, their hit point pools do roll independently of each other, so you can have a super long phase one and like a baby, baby phase four, which is gonna be great. Like when our runners get to that phase and they see like a paper thin phase four they they will be over the moon to know that the, the seed is finally over So chat, Fred has a... Uh, Fred freed Kaylee 1, got the Wake Water, got Phoebe 2, is gonna take Phoebe 2 to the Windia Inn now, trade out Kaylee 2 for Phoebe 2. I think I mixed up the names just now. Uh, go upstairs to talk to Kaylee 2, and get the item from Kaylee 2, which is the Cat Claws. Um, chat, if you could judge just frustration from resets that reset right just right there just said I'm over it
I mean, at least at least all of the the items that we need to get to the Mega Grenades are all in a nice little tightly packed area. Uh, oh man, he just saved, and he's gonna find the Venus key. I really hope he doesn't reset here uh, out of just like frustration or anything. All right. Um, meanwhile, on T side, we're back into phase three, so I get to count again. Uh, T is gonna just... Looks like he, we're, we're going to play this really safely. This is... This could get dangerous because Dark King just went first. We're gonna leave Phoebe on auto here. Um, so when your character is on auto, uh, or your, your allies on auto, basically what happens is they don't make their decision until uh, it's their turn to move. So if someone is KO'd, if someone is dead, um, your ally will revive them. If somebody is less than 50% of their health, your ally will cure them. Dark King is not being kind to T at all right now, and, and Phoebe is outspeeding the Dark King sometimes, uh, which is dangerous. Normally you have the Dark King always going first. I think that's the second attack we've seen in Phase 3, so we'll just call that number 2 right there. Um, but what happens is when you have these speed ties, um, you have a situation where the Dark King can attack back-to-back uh, -to -back, uh, without any heals or cures happening in between. And that can lead to really unfortunate wipes that are really just not your fault. They're just, you know... Sometimes the RNG has, has its day. All right, Fred is gonna get his Mega Grenades now. Breathe a huge sigh of relief. I can see the head shaking happening right here. Um, and for those of you who are not currently on his stream, you can probably feel the head shaking right there. Um, looks like after five, uh, we're into phase four on T's side. One. He is just taking this super safely. Uh, I don't think he wants to be here any longer than really any of us want him to be here. This fight is going extremely long. Hebbings rolled the absolute banger of a seed here. That's two. Six item chain to Mega Grenades. Fully thick Dark King. This is everything you could want to ask for. Three! Three flare hits! Oh. And the Dark King goes down, and that is that is game one to T right there. With an official race time of 116.59. Uh, GG's to our runner right there. Uh, Fred is... Fred has had enough. Uh, Fred is gonna say, see you in round two, man. Um, so we're gonna... We're gonna watch this play out. Alright, so, so chat. Um... I'm getting getting word from our sponsors here. Uh, we are going to go into the next match. Uh, we're gonna go straight in from one to two, um, but we do have a little bit of an intermission here. We are gonna have a ten minute break, um, so uh, you can stick around. You can watch the screens. Um, you can watch them get set up. Listen to some beautiful game audio. Um, and then after that, we will pick it up here in round two in about 10 minutes. So until then, chat, take care of yourselves.
Benjamin, I'm a little boy from way back when, way back when, gonna kill the monster, save the world, even though I don't get the girl, in the end, I know a mystic quest awaits me, if I want to go, I know To show. Cause of her brothers in the house, she cuts, 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 the most the dog is writhing on the side that happens, wishing it would die and everybody knows, knows, everybody goes, goes, missed the quest, it is the best and everybody shows, shows, look into my eyes and I will tell you of a card, for 100,000 miles but you will never see a star, back to reality, no point in gravity, they said that I'm the best but all the others left them mad at me, I made the monsters go out that hurt when I swing my sword, I make them wish that when I'm through with them, they were never born. I know a mystic quest awaits me if I should choose. 
sword the bad guys say oh that hurts you know i do but even if i die there's no game over screen you restart the battle so i don't know why this song exists Okay, gamers, welcome back from uh, halftime here. Uh, we are now into game two of our semifinals match between uh, Fred and T. Uh, for those of us who are just joining us, uh, you, missed, you missed a wild one in game one. Uh, we had it all. We had a six item chain to go mode. We had a Dark King. Uh, the, we had an extra thick Dark King. Um, who couldn't decide if he wanted to go first or second. Uh, so that made um, the battle all that much harder. Uh, but at the end of it, T came out ahead. So T is now up 1-0. Uh, so this is game 2. Uh, which will be getting underway in just a little bit. Uh, T playing for the win, Fred looking to force it to a game three. By the way, uh, audience, uh, if Fred does force it to a game three, that means we get treated to a game three as well. We're going to do all three of these games back to back to back. All right. Anyway, over here at Speed Gaming Live at the Mystic Quest Randomizer Tournament, we have standard rules, standard logic, and save the crystals. All right, so our runners here, uh, varying starting weapon, but uh, this time we are starting with a sword, getting an axe out of the old man. Um, Fred going to do these, uh, no, not Fred, sorry. T going to do these uh, level four-ish checks immediately, getting exit. Uh, Fred walked uh, through Windia just now and found absolutely... Oh no, Fred's still in Windia. Uh, Forresta, sorry. Uh, getting some Venus Key uh, right over there. So that that's a, that's a real uh, slap in the face there from the previous seed. Uh, more on that later on. Uh, Fred also getting his axe from the old man, also getting exit. We actually didn't have an exit spell last game um, until the very, very end. Uh, so this seed is going to go a lot faster. No no, no more walks uh, out of dungeons uh, or out of towns for that matter. 
uh, right there getting a demonstration of how fast you can exit. Uh, we just got ourselves a stun coin. Uh, well. Hmm. Oh, thank God. All right. P got a river coin out of the battlefield, so this is this is not going to be the the mounting disaster that this could have been. Whew. So, chat. Um, it is possible to get a sun coin. And only a sun coin out of Foresta, thus forcing you into the Windia section where all the enemies are at least like level, we'll say, 14 or 15, and you are very much not. Uh, but we are, we are gonna be spared that debacle today. I thought Hevings was about to go two for two and amazing seeds right there. Um. Tristan, I'm having just an absolutely beautiful item here in Cupid Locket. Uh, Cupid Locket giving us resistance to a lot of things. Um, poison, silence, confusion. Um, so we will not be seeing our main characters get confused anymore. Uh, in Mystic Quest, the way status resistances work is once you are resistant to it, you are, you are proofed from it. Uh, so our runners are very much confusion proof right now. Alright, so Fred is clearing out a battlefield. I think he's probably trying to get some get some money going into Fireberg. Uh, T just heading straight into Fireberg, grabbing Ruben, <clears throat> and getting the Tristam 2 item. So, uh, um, Tristam 2 handing out elixirs um, today at the bar. So, our, our runners are really just kind of like swapping spaces with each other right now. Um, they're, they need stuff. Uh, for instance, in Fireberg, there's a vendor that sells an item for 500 gold. So they need gold. Um, they just started the run. They really don't have any weapons except for a steel sword and an axe. Level 1 sword, level 1 axe. So they're looking for better weapons. They're looking for magic. Um, what they're not looking to do is having to fight like just the ultimate um, baddies right now with no kit. <clears throat> so Fred doing some, some uh, we'll, we'll call this like some anti-clown defense. He, he already got trolled pretty hard. Um, and he's gonna find Blizzard in the rope bridge. So he saw that red chest and he was like, oh my god. Really? What are these seeds? Um, but no, not these seeds. Uh, T got a stand coin out of the battlefield. Bought a bunch of seeds and now going to check the Firebird vendor. Uh, getting a Thunder Rock. Man, this feels like the last seed. Uh, Fred, oh, over, so our, our runners have really diverged. The, it's basically looking like two different seeds at this point. Um, Fred over in Windia right now, picking up the Jumbo Bombs uh, and a Libra Crest. Um, so that will help him do some item checks uh, later on. T getting a magic mirror uh, using the sand coin on the path to Aquaria in Focus Tower. Uh, so Fred basically doing a... Man. A front to back clear basically. He's starting, he's starting at the end and working his way backwards. Uh, T gets uh, Phoebe uh, from her normal spot. 
it looks like she has to clear out a battlefield next to Winry Cave, and then he'll be getting the uh, Win the, the Phoebe one item. Fred, meanwhile, taking uh, taking his Sun Coin for all of its worth, <laughs> going into a live forest. Guys, I think Fred is just like totally on like anti clown defense mode right now. Like he he got trolled pretty hard in the seed previous to this. Um and I think what he's doing is he's doing all of the checks. All of the, the bad item checks now. And I mean if you spike something early, doing, doing running that route, then I mean, you're gonna be pretty ahead because it could be it, it could be an entire seed before you, your opponent um, goes and finds uh, what you're looking for. Uh, Phoebe handing out a battle axe in Winry Cave. Um, our runners don't have a claw right now, and T doesn't have bombs, so. Pretty much uh, getting the item out of Winry Cave and then getting kicked out immediately. Uh, multi key from the Aquaria vendor. Uh, so that'll give T some options when he goes back to Fireberg at some point. Chat already coming in. Um with the jokes. Please, please, don't get me started, chat. Like, I, I will have some pretty good ones, too, later on. Um, but meanwhile, let's see. Fred is taking the Firebird path, so we're gonna see a bunch of checks that we've seen already. Uh, T up in the battlefield, right outside of Ice Pyramid. Uh, he can die of Ice Pyramid. He has a sword and a magic... and... The magic mirror will keep him from running into random encounters, or not so much random encounters, just unseen, invisible enemy encounters. Uh, Fred will get his Thunder Rock as well, and probably gonna get his gonna get his elixir. No, he can't get his elixir yet. He has to dump Tristan first. Fred will pick up Ruben and then go talk to Tristam at the bar to get his elixir. Does life still work to kill enemies? Yes! Uh, so in the randomizer and in the vanilla game, you can cast life on an enemy. Uh, life acting as an instant death spell in most cases. Uh, but there is a caveat. There is a... There is a... Uh, very big asterisk next to that. Um, some enemies are are death proof, like because it is an instant kill attack. Um, most bosses, most bosses have resistance to life, unless your name is Flamorous Rex. Uh, the other thing is that your level, um, the, the level of the caster must be higher than the enemy's internal hidden level. Uh, so, for instance, Kaylee 1 and Tristan 1 are not not leveled up enough to cast life on Flamorous. But if you walk back Phoebe 1, for instance, at level 15, uh, Phoebe 1 can, can life Flamorous and take him out. Uh, T is doing the Ice Pyramid checks. Um, no claw, so he's not going to be able to he's not going to be able to clear it. Uh, but he does get a Moon Helm, so Moon Helm or Apollo Helm being on our list of treasures that we want, um, giving us fire resistance. That'll be very helpful in Fireberg, <clears throat> and in the Lava Dome, and in our battle against the Dark King who has Mega Flare. Uh, Team Murdoch in chat. Hmm, it's a very, it's a very interesting proposition. What's in it for me?
I, I will seriously consider that proposal. That, that that looks like it could be a lot of fun. Hopefully this seed is uh, also a lot of fun and and not the bully that it was to our runners last last round. Uh, let's see, what is T gonna do here? T has a few more outs, praying for a claw, um, before before he gets unceremoniously kicked out of Ice Pyramid. So you need a claw to finish Ice Pyramid. Uh, without a claw, the randomizer will stop you from progressing because you will soft lock. I mean, they have exit, so it's not a total soft lock, um, but it could be. But, but it will be bad. Uh, so he just basically drops down to the fourth floor, picks up his Aegis Shield, which is something that we want. We do want an Aegis Shield, because uh, it gives us Petrify Resistance against the Dark King later on. Um, but not finding anything else, he, he is out of Ice Pyramid. Uh, he is setting up now for a Falls Basin check. Fred cl uh, goes to Bone Dungeon and full clears it. Um, Lights his first crystal, but no prizes to be awarded that I could see. Yeah, Ruben can life the boss. Um, all of your allies have life. Um, it's a built-in nice little safety, even in the vanilla game. Uh, Ruben, uh, Fred now getting his ugh, magic mirror. Uh, and Ruben is a quite a high level, um, both in his first and second forms. So it's literally only Kaylee 1 and F and Tristan 1. Kaylee 1 being like level 3, and Tristan 1 being like level 7, um, that cannot life Flamorous. Everybody else is higher than that, um, and can basically boot Flamorous into the dumpster. Okay, so let's see. Exit, cure, heal. Okay, so Fred picked up a heal spell in Bone Dungeon. Uh, that is like a it's a it's like a lousy light. It removes status effects, but it doesn't cure or restore any hit points. Um, that's why we're looking for life because in battle, life will uh, restore all your hit points and clear out all status effects. It, it is essentially like a full restore. Um, Fred having a claw and bombs um, can do a lot of damage in Windry Cave, just choosing to do the back though, or the top of Windry Cave, uh, and getting an Apollo Helm. Basically, Moon Helm Plus right there. It's the same fire resistance, but um, plus on the defense. Uh, T is out of Aquaria, and he's gonna head on to Firebird. Um, somehow, I don't know how, but he did not pick up a Sun Coin in Foresta. Uh, so. Man, this is really a tale of two seeds. Fred has a Sun Coin, so he can immediately uh, dip into Windia and get Phoebe too. And that might be the plan. He's gonna check. He's probably gonna go back to Fireberg at this point. Well, T gets a Cat Claw out of the temple. That was a free claw right there. Fred was in the Fireberg area. He didn't. He didn't check the temple then, so he didn't get a claw. But he will take this multi key uh, to Fireberg, and he is going to. 
Grab Ruben one. Uh, and do some of the checks. T is in the mine. T is in south mine. Um, so he is pretty much on a beeline to the gin. Uh, level 10, not great weapons, not great magic. This is going to be a harder fight than it needs to be uh, for T, but this is, this is solvable. He has fire resistance. Uh, Fred's seeing the wake water out of the hermit. Okay, now it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. What do you do? Do you go to Aquaria with Ruben? Activate your Wake Water, and you know since you're there, you can you have a claw, so you can full clear Ice Pyramid. Or do you go? And he's gonna go right. So instead of going left, he goes right. He's gonna go to Windia. He is gonna turn in uh, for Ruben for Phoebe two. And that'll give him what he needs to really wreck shop in a lot of the dungeons coming up. Uh, meanwhile, on T's side, T in the Jin fight, um, Ruben right now the only one with a life spell. So we do have to play safe strats uh, with Ruben, making sure that he stays alive. So the damage is going to be slow coming out on the Jin. Does Wake Water lead to an item? Well... <sighs> well, chat. Uh, in the last game, the Wake Water was part of a 6 item chain that led to go mode. Uh, both our runners needed Mega Grenades for go mode. Both our runners... Uh, that was their last item. Uh, and Fred literally like last location those mega grenades. Uh, so Fred doing the walk to Spencer's place. He has exit this time. He will get out a lot faster. Uh, T finding a white spell uh, in the back of the mine along with a bomb uh, from Ruben. Uh, and then on Fred's side, Mobius and Gemini Crest back to back. Uh, so he got Mobius from Spencer, and using the Venus key to open the chest, uh, he got Gemini. So he'll be able to warp all over the place now. Uh, we may we we may not see Focus Tower a lot from Fred anymore. Uh, but since the since the hell is thawed, uh, he is going through the battlefields. He's gonna pick up all the quest items out of the blue battlefields, and then he's going to do the back of Focus Tower most likely with his Venus key to get the incentivized item out of there. So... T is now, I think, trying to figure out what to do. Um, so, no sun coin. Um, so he's gonna trade Trist... He's gonna trade in Ruben 1 for Tristan 2. Get the wake water. Don't exit, man. Okay. That... Okay. And then he's gonna go back to Ruben's house and get Ruben too. Alright. That was a... That was a terrifying moment there. I thought he was gonna walk out the... Walk out the door with Tristan too. Uh, Ruben too is actually semi-useful because in addition to his heavy-hitting Morningstar attack, um, Tristan... Ruben too also has white. Um which he can cast, uh, just for a little bit less damage than Phoebe too. 
Uh, Fred getting a Charm Claw out of the battlefield. Um, and a few other treasures. Um, along with Mega Grenades. So we know that Wake Water is going to be hard required. Hmm. Oh, and Venus Shield. Okay, so Fred now with Mega Grenades and Venus Shield. Thanks, chat. Fred probably got those Mega Grenades and had some words for them. Because that is... That was the source of a lot of his pain and suffering in, in the last seed. Alright, but with no Sun Coin, this is interesting. Uh, T uh, doing the walk to Spencer's place and getting his Mobius and his uh, Gemini Crests. Uh, no Libra Crest though, so no free item check at the Libra Temple. Uh, but he is gonna, but with the Hill Thought, he is gonna do the battlefield uh, and get his item. So he will get his. Uh, Mega Grenades, uh, shortly, along with his, uh, well, he has a Ninja Shield already. Alright, Fred in the Ice Pyramid. Um, so we've seen this already. Uh, T getting his Mega Grenades. Venus Shield doesn't matter. Checking to see if he needs to revisit a temple. He does not. Getting his Giant's Axe and Okay, so what are we gonna do now, T? We have Reuben 2. We have a Mobius Crest, so we can get to India. I don't know how you missed that Sun Coin, though. So you can trade out... Reuben 2 for Phoebe 2 if you want to. Looks like that is what we are going to do. T is now going to Windia. Alright, uh, on the fifth floor, we haven't seen this yet. Uh, no items on the fifth floor. So Fred is just gonna straight drop down, get. He is making that exit spell work for him in Windia. Uh, bias his jumble bombs. Don't really know why he did that. He already has the mega grenades. He, he might have not just been reading. He might have just been pressing the A button a little bit. Uh, and he's gonna turn in his thunder rock uh, for the rainbow bridge. So this will be a set of new checks for us. Uh, Fred up top. Uh, about to go uh, visit the Ice Golem. He's got a few spells uh, on him, so he'll be able to at least... Uh, he won't be able to nuke the Ice Golem. No flare this time. Alright, T getting his uh, Libra Crest. He's gonna do the, the Vanilla Mobius check uh, for not seeing anything. He'll be coming back down. And he'll be doing all of the free temple checks. We'll 
Well, T, last location, this. What is this? The coin? Um. So he actually doesn't need a sun coin because he has multi key and Mobius crest. So yeah, you are seeing basically coin skip strats. You are seeing some logic breaking on T's side. It just means that instead of walking through Focus Tower, um, he has to he has to warp. All right, Fred done on now with Ice Pyramid. There were no items available. Uh, going into Winery, the back of Winery Cave and grabbing a Flare spell. If he had that, like maybe like you know a minute ago, our 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 Ice Golem fight would have been much much shorter. <laughs> but then if he had it and the Ice Golem fight were shorter, I wouldn't be able to talk with you guys. Uh, no items, and we are choosing to fade Squidite, which is pretty, which is a very popular uh, technique. All right, what do we, what do we need? What do we need, guys? We need. We're about halfway through now. We need a Dragon Claw, and we need a Captain's Cap. Uh, T using the Mobius Crest uh, and pulling an Excalibur uh, out of tree. Excalibur, the strongest weapon you can get when active on your character, gives you, giving you a plus. Is it a plus five to speed? I think. I don't remember the exact number. Uh, it does let your characters go a little faster. Um, but against most bosses, it is not gonna matter. Your character, your main character speed is just not high enough to matter. Uh... Fred in Lava Dome now, so he is gonna full clear Lava Dome. It looks like we saw the right side checks be nothing, so he's probably gonna left side. Uh, yup. Oh, and then he found, he's gonna find Tree Wither. Ooh. Again, flashbacks. And he has Elixir, so... That might be what he does, actually. It, it would make logical sense. If, he, if he's still looking for items, that would actually make a lot of sense for him to do. Uh, T leaving the Windia area and then warping out. He's gonna full clear Ice Pyramid now that he has a Claw. Uh, chat asking, do mini bosses have items? So in the randomizer, um, what happened is a lot of the item checks that would have happened in the vanilla sequence in one of those uh, dungeons, uh, we've moved underneath one of the mini bosses. So um, Squidite normally guards an item, uh, so there's an item under him. Uh, Crab, normally Phoebe gives you the jumbo bombs to blow your way out of uh, Paul's Basin. Uh, now Crab has the item. Uh, let's see, Medusa has an item, and Dulahan. Also another mini boss. Uh, we moved the Apollo Helm check under Dulahan. But the Apollo Helm check is considered to be a brown box location in this flag set. Uh, mm. So... Yeah. A lot of the mini bosses will reward you with a quote item, but the item is most likely going to be a brown box. So yeah, so Trinton is right. There's, it's, you're not really incentivized to do those uh, checks unless you're choosing to do them as part of full clearing, like say Falls Basin, right? We saw T 
Dew Falls Basin for the item behind the waterfall. And while you're there, right, instead of fading it, you may as well just take out the crap. You're there already. Uh, and finish the job so you don't have to come back later on. Uh, Fred, now deep in Lava Dome, we, we see actually a lot of uh, red chests kind of lying around on the floor here. Uh, Hydra's being notoriously lazy people, not bothering to put their items on shelves or anything. Uh, so he grabs a Gaia's armor right there. Um, that'll give him water, wind, and sleep protection, I believe. Uh, and getting a Dragon Claw out of it. Uh, so... That Dragon Claw being on path, um, there's really no way for our runners to miss it. It's just a matter of when, when they do it. Like, Lava Dome is re Lava Dome is hard required um, because you need to beat all the bosses and light all the you need to beat all the main bosses and light the crystals. Um, that is literally the path to the Hydra. Uh, the only reason you would skip those checks is you're already in Go mode. So yeah, the, the Dragon Claw, uh, sorry chat, the Claw is not going to be the decider of who, uh, who uh, is going to make it out of this seat alive today. The Captain's Cap, however, can be anywhere. Except, well, the only place that Captain's Cap cannot be is in Dune Castle. Uh, with this flag set, you can literally have the captain's cap on max ship. Well, in this flag set, you can have it. In this seed, you can't. Um, in, in this seed, you're gonna have the captain's cap in the last chest before Hydra. <laughs> but yeah, you could have the captain's cap on the ship. Um, and you have to, like, say, dig around uh, in the bottom decks of the ship to find the cap, and then hand your hand your cap over to uh, Knack. To me, that seems kind of a loser deal. Um, you're basically, like, as Mac, like, you're giving away an entire ship just for a cap. Yeah, the math just doesn't stack up. And chat, the way that the runners are finding their items just as I'm kind of describing them, yes, it, it really does kind of like take all the suspense out of the game. I'm trying to build here a story for you guys and it's just not happening. Um, Fred is in his Hydra fight right now. Uh, Hydra being a little bit of a bully. Uh, we have a life spell. We do not have a life spell. So that is going to be a wipe on Fred's side. Um, so we are still looking for a life spell for safety. Um, so I think now in, uh, in round two here, we're going to see a little bit more defensive play come out of Fred. Um, fire is gonna hit like a truck on Phoebe. Uh, she has no defense against fire. Uh, which does more damage, flare or blizzard? Uh, flare. witchcraft story i think i think the witchcraft story like i think like the the galaxy brain play of the day right now still is on fred's side even though fred even though fred uh, lost in round one fred took phoebe to to firebird and i forget if this was before or after the the, the lava dome but he dumped phoebe to for for Ruben 1, 
not having mega grenades or any incentive to check mine and took took but we knew that captain's cap was on Ruben one and that the mine was hard required and and Fred just like did it out of nowhere and that, that was just an amazing play Like somebody, somebody had a had a crystal ball, uh, working for him early on, and then it turned on him. Uh, Fred into phase four now of the Hydra fight. We we didn't even get a chance to talk about phase three. Just that's just how fast it ran. Uh, but Fred is doing a really really good job here in this Hydra fight, um, keeping everybody alive, playing really defensively, and that is it. Um, so that is. That is crystal number three now. And our runners with an exit spell are gonna be like, nope, peace. I think at this point, uh, so let's see, if I'm still looking for life, um, I might double exit and go to, go back to Forest to do the two Kaylee checks for items because it would be on path back to Windia. Uh, Fred here is going to... Free the ship. And then I think it looks like he's gonna set himself up to just do Pazuzu's tower into Max ship. Talking to Norma really quickly, getting five seconds of good luck out of her. I mean, it could work. A little bit of RNG manip there. Um, we did see a red chest there down on the third floor. Um, you can get to that chest without any items. You just simply walk down the path and jump over the ledge. Um, Fred is choosing to fade that check. I guess he's not looking for life. He's just going to play it defensively against the Dark King. Um, Fred not able, however, to just simply blast his way through this enemy set. Uh, those of us new, new to the chat, new to the game, um, that little green enemy with the tentacles, um, him and his good friend, the Black Ooze, have natural magic reflection. So they have always on magic reflection. Any spell cast at them is going to get sent back at our players. So he has to, uh, he has to beat them up the old fashioned way. And now taking on a few extra fights, it looks like. Uh, he probably wants to be set up um, at level 16 for the Pazuzu fight. Uh, level 16 being the threshold for a fourth wizard magic charge. You get one wizard magic charge every four levels. Uh, T picking up his Dragon Claw. He'll be also picking up his Captain's Cap in about two encounters. Mm. Alright, and choosing to... Okay, thank you. Almost had another uh, super disaster right there.
All right, we have our bird on floor five. So Fred is gonna have to, so the gimmick in Pazuzu's tower is you gotta lock up all the elevators uh, and force Pazuzu between the two floors that have elevators. So him being on floor five, uh, Fred has to lock the elevators on four and six and then walk back up five. But you can't just get to the Pazuzu fight on floor five normally. Um, the, you'd either have to go up to seven and down to five. Um, but what would actually be faster is from six you go down to four, lock the elevator, go down one more floor to three, and then Dragon Claw cross the gap, and then use the external stairs to go back up to five. Uh, Teen now in his Hydra fight, getting a little toasty there, but nothing that he can't handle. He has white. I remember that we found that earlier. I just don't remember what specific check that was that Fred didn't do. Alright, Fred, just hop across. There you go. Okay, now Fred is seeing this red chest over here, and he gets rewarded with his life spell. Good job, Fred. That's a full kit right there, and all the safeties we need to take on the Dark King without too much stress. There's always some stress involved. It wouldn't be fun if it were just an easy, you know, walk up to the Dark King and a quick old handshake. We gotta inject a little bit of fun into it. Alright, he is back out on the world map. Um, he has a full kit except for life as well. We know where that is. Um, so he's probably looking for that, which is why he's spending some time in the battlefield. Uh, no sun coin, but no sun coin, no problem. Because he can simply just Mobius warp over to India. Uh, Fred in the Pazuzu fight. Suzu, uh, being unkind with the stone beak, uh, on Phoebe, but it's not gonna pose massive problems for our runner. Um, well, that there on Fred's side was an example of the genius AI at work. So you would think that the programmers would write in a check so that the AI wouldn't cast spells like Arrow or White on Pazuzu when Pazuzu has his Psych Shield on. But I mean, this game was like written back in the 90s, so these things do happen, chat. Yeah, the, the really unfortunate thing though about Phoebe using Arrow, so there's a there's some interesting things about Phoebe, uh, or Phoebe 2 for instance. If you look at her black magic list of spells, she there is no Arrow entry. She does not have the black magic book for Arrow. Oh, T didn't do Flamerish yet. Okay, so T... T now here at Bone Dungeon, so he's even more behind than we thought he was. I mean, this will be fast, but I mean, it's still time. Uh, however, if you have Phoebe 2 on auto, uh, Phoebe 2 will pull Arrow out of her magic repository uh, and use it from time to time, especially because uh, Pazuzu is weak against wind. Uh, but the way Pazuzu's Psych Shield works is that 
Um, the spell is cast, so arrow is cast on Pazuzu. Pazuzu is weak to win, so the damage is multiplied. And then Psych Shield activates and reflects the magic. So the math happens first. Uh, Fred now into phase three on Pazuzu. Um, knows exactly how the script works. Uh, basically, what happens is every other turn, fee uh, Psych Shield will go up and down. Uh, when you know it's coming down you know Ben is going to be slower than Zuzu because he's just at such a low level. So you can have him send out nukes. Um, Phoebe, on the other hand, will be in a speed tie. Uh, so she might go first sometimes and she might go second. So you just play it safe and have her just attack normally uh, or cast a uh, healing magic. Uh, any leveling for Fred? So Fred, that that's a uh, that's crystal number four right there. Fred will get his sky coin, and it'll be interesting to see what he does next. Uh, he is level 17. There are some fights he can do to get himself up to 18. Um, Eighteen will make it a little bit harder for him to die. Um, but the rounds three and four can. He'll still see massive damage um, from Spider Kids. All right, now at 19. Oh yeah, so he went from 17 to 19 there, and so now now he's a uh, pretty uh, proof. So that that right there. Um, Normally, you don't gain two levels at a time in, in games. Uh, but the way this works here in Mystic Quest... So let's say you're a thousand experience points away from leveling up. <clears throat> that... Uh, so what happens is... Experience counts down. So... You're 1,000 experience away from leveling up. You fight the battle. You get 1,000 experience points. Yay, you level up. You're Because, right, 1,000 minus more than 1,000 is zero. Um, that... And then you get an experience reward. So you're at zero already. Uh, and you get more experience. Well, the game is like, well, you're at zero still. So you must get another level. Uh, because the exper the to next level counter does not reset until you get back to the world map. So yes, that is the that is the vanilla double level experience gain trick. Um and then yeah you don't see <laughs> then you don't see levels for a little while. Because the gap between your current experience and the next level's requirement is now going to be large. Alright, uh, Fred into the Dark King fight, ready to take it straight to him. Guys, we are we are seriously uh, cheering on um, Fred here, uh, mainly because we want a game 3. Yeah, um, in that particular situation, yes, Fred was very, very smart. You expect to see that out of a seasoned runner like Fred. Um, also very lucky because he was in the right experience range and he had a battle, a great experience battlefield uh, that only had one battle in it uh, to clear. So it was like literally the right combination of like stuff that he needed in order to have happen.
All right, well, this is great. Uh, now on to Fred. Now on to phase two of the Dark King fight. Uh, T in Pazuzu's tower has his life spell lock the elevator in place, and he'll be into the Pazuzu fight very, very shortly. So this this could get close. I mean, Fred does have a pretty sizable lead. Um, but for anyone who has watched some of these uh, semi-final rounds, even the quarters play out, uh, we know from experience that the Dark King can just be like, nah, it's okay, you can wait here for a little while. And you might have a 15, 20, 30 minute Dark King fight. Alright, so we are we are seeing some auto strats here on Fred's side. Ooh. Ooh, this is rough. Going into phase three at not max HP plus minus one Ben. This could be rough. That is not what you want to see out of Dark King on that situation. This is okay, so this is gonna be a white. Um Alright. Uh round two people. Yeah, you move. Yeah, that that was just that was just an unlucky phase change. If we were still in round, if we were still in phase two on that fight, um, Fred would have easily gotten that life spell off with Phoebe, uh, and we'd still be playing. Moving into phase three like that with the spider, um, and getting silver webbed on the first on the first turn, Phoebe is gonna take a confusion status proc, and even if she gets out of it, uh, she still won't get her turn. And then the next hit will kill her. So yes, that in the business right there, that's just bad luck. Alright, th this looks like more of a normal Dark King fight that looked like about maybe like six or seven hits right there. Uh, for those of us playing along at home, in seed number one, I'm just gonna do the math right now as we watch this fight. In the first seed, we saw a total of 31 hits to Dark King. Which gave Dark King roughly 59,000 hit points. Um, for those of us wondering, the Dark King starts at 40,000 hit points in his vanilla playout. The seed flags can take Dark King all the way to 150% of that, or 1.5 times uh, his vanilla amount. Uh, which means that he could have a theoretical maximum of 60,000 hit points. Which basically means that in the last seed, the Dark King was basically as strong as he could have been. Uh, T is done with Pazuzu, has his Sky Coin. Uh, and is now on Captain Max ship, so he'll be catching up pretty soon. Uh, on Fred's side, we have a confused Phoebe, um, so we are going to send a life spell her way to full cure her. All right, and so you like to see it right there. Uh, Dark King not lasering um, Ben, 
So Phoebe was able to get that full cure. And then it didn't really matter what happened after that. Um, so Phoebe sent a life spell Ben's way. See right there, that's the laser I'm talking about. Uh, um, that dealt about 820 something, I think. Uh, so th right there, unless you're like, what, 22? I think unless you're like level 22, yeah, you're you're not gonna survive a laser blast to the face from Dark King in phases three and four. But who has the time to get to level 22 in a speed run? seeing auto strats right there also uh, into phase four uh now in the dark king fight uh, we use those auto strats um mainly because the ai of the ally will make a decision only when it's her turn to act uh so you don't need to guess at what you need to do uh if your partner is dead your ally will life them if anybody is under 50% HP, your ally will cure them. And Phoebe's magic power is enough when, cat, when cure is cast to full cure both characters. All right, that's two blasts to the Dark King right now. We're really hoping that the next one, uh, Fred playing it super safe here with defense strats. And that is time. Uh, um, Fred taking game two here in the sem in, in the semifinal round. All right, so so chat, we wanted it. We wanted to be here for the full four and a half hours today. Uh, so you are going to get gifted a game three. seeing the dot done in chat and being like nope all right so we're gonna have a winner take all match for game three uh, let's see who's around to set up uh set up the fun Alright chat, uh, looks like looks like we'll be uh, getting set up pretty soon here. Um, we are going to take a 10 minute break however, um, so we will pick this right back up in game 3 in 10 minutes. Uh, that way you have some time uh, to do some, some rewatering of yourself. Uh, if you're anything like me, you probably need to put something in your belly uh, because let me tell you, calming these things, uh, they take some effort. So, you and I, we will see each other uh, right after these messages from our sponsors.
Alright gamers, welcome back for game three of our semi-finals uh, between T and Fred here. Uh, so for those for those of us just joining, uh, we'll catch you up. T took game one, uh, Fred just won game two, and we are now into a winner take all in game three. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, it's my fault. I've been kind of treating this like one long segment. Uh, for those of us new to the randomizer, maybe you want to join or take a take a stab at the Mystic Quest randomizer. It's a it's a real nice easy randomizer to get started with. I mean, it's fairly linear. Uh, so you can get the information right there. Um, that's the site where you can gen all your seeds at. And join the Discord, hop in, a uh, very welcoming place. And while we're at it... Oh look, there's a command for all of this. Does this command work? No, that command does not work. All right. Uh, while you're at it, uh, you've been treated to a really great show today uh, here by our two runners, uh, T and Fred. So drop, drop by, uh, vi visit their uh, Twitch accounts, definitely give them a follow, really helps our runners out. Also today on crew, um, through three games, um, you've had me, uh, Hatox, uh, on comms. Uh, Ekamot has been definitely pulling more than just, like, he's been pulling like three people's weight here uh in tracking and wild has been uh our, our restreaming crew right here all right so here we go game three getting started we have bombs <clears throat> another bomb start uh and t finding his sun coin um from the old man immediately uh fred over in uh foresta getting his giant's axe uh, he'll be able to start knocking down some trees and clearing it and doing the rest of the level forest checks and getting the Gaia's armor. All right. Uh, not far behind him is going to be T, also getting his uh, axe and armor. Uh, so he'll be set up to do all of the level forest checks as well. Uh, we really want to get these checks out of the way early. Um, we'll, we'll never be back unless we have to go and talk to Kaylee at this point. Uh, how often do the runners fail to do that double take and miss a chest? Um, well, if you're me, um, it's, it's a pretty good 50-50 chance. Uh, if I'm paying attention, then no, I, I, I think I got it. Um, and if I'm already trying to like figure out what you know my my play after the next play is, a lot of times as a especially as a starting out runner, you figure out what your route is, and then you get this new item that can change your route, but you've already figured out where you're going next, and your brain just doesn't like push the stop button fast enough. Uh, but these are very seasoned, very experienced runners, so so we're going to expect them to, to make those full clear checks all the time. Uh, and when they when they do skips, um, they're going to be very calculated skips. Uh, and the color codes for the battlefield. So we actually have all three colors right here in front of us. We have gray, green, and blue. So gray is an experienced battlefield, so the reward for the, ex uh, the battlefield is experience. A green battlefield indicates a reward of gold, and a blue battlefield indicates that there will be a reward of a quest item. Uh, in this particular case, the quest item being the sand coin. So I am again denied the hilarity of a sun coin start followed by progression somewhere deep in Windia. Having uh, is taking away all of my fun. And uh, Tristan there, uh, handing out a captain's cap um, as his uh, ally item. One of the items that we are going to need for go mode. 
So in this particular flag set, we need a Thunder Rock, a Captain's Cap, and a Mobius Crest for Go Mode. Um, the Sun Coin is logically required, but there are ways to skip that logical sequence. And then we need a Dragon's Claw and Mega Grenade uh, to navigate through Doom Castle. We're gonna need a sword and an axe of some sort to clear out the rest of our dungeons. So let's see, it looks like our runners are just gonna be like pretty much uh, clearing out all of the easy battlefields here. Uh, so Fred is the first one to focus tower, so that's pretty much the game right there. We can just call it. Fred takes game three. First to focus tower. Uh, he'll be going to Aquaria. Uh, T will also be following him very shortly. They're gonna grab Phoebe. <clears throat> They're gonna do the Aquaria checks and then they'll get the Phoebe one item. And then from there, that's when I think our routes may diverge a little bit. We've, we've definitely seen a few things over the course of two seeds. Uh, so T doing something here um, unusual. He's given some. He's he's actually choosing to give Tristan a little day in the sun right now. Um, most of the times we just go to Phoebe and get her, and then let her fire spell and her thunder spell make quick work of all the battlefields we need to deal with. Uh, Dragon Claw for sale. Uh, Two hundred gold at the Aquaria vendor. Uh, that's a nice on path item that our runners will not miss. Uh, and then we have a blue battlefield uh, west of Wintry, uh, so we'll be using Phoebe and her fire spell to clear that out as well. What what is the the uh, the desert hags are weak to fire, but they're they're taking a little bit of more damage than you'd normally think they would. So in this flag set, uh, some things to note. Enemies can... Uh, we, we randomize a lot of things. So we've randomized battlefield rewards. Obviously the items are randomized. Uh, brown box shuffle is turned on, which means that any brown box, <clears throat> which normally indicates a consumable item, can have a quest item. Uh, but to make things a little easier, uh, if that does happen, we turn that brown box red in order to indicate the quest item. Uh, NPCs and battlefields are incentivized uh, places, so NPCs that would give you an item, um, they will be giving you a quest item and not just any old like consumable trash. Mm. Same thing with battlefields, blue battlefields will give you a quest item and not just like pure potions. So Fred pulling Tree Wither uh, out of that particular battlefield. Uh, and we've got some red chests today in uh, Wintery Cave. Uh, and we have bombs. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to... We've scouted it. We're going to clear this red chest right here on the ledge. Fire spell making quick work of our enemies here. Getting a Charm Claw. Unnecessary. We already have a Dragon Claw. Enemies just all over the place, blocking access to our scouting locations. It's okay, we can get some easy levels right here. Uh, nothing at the top of Wintery Cave. Is Fred gonna dip? Fred is gonna make a save. So we're gonna see Fred explore the back of Wintery Cave. And we've, we've seen this from him already in games one and two. If we don't find anything worthwhile, like, we might just find... Sure don't know if that's worth holding on to just yet. <clears throat> it's a good safety spell uh, to have, though. 
but your later allies will have cure, so it will not be necessary. Uh, and then Fred's gonna check the back of Winery. Uh, he's gonna check the chest right before Squid, not finding anything. Okay, so he's not holding on to cure. Uh, he's gonna reset and he's gonna be out of Winery. Uh, T also in Winch Wintry, but he is not, uh, we, we, I did not see a save to come set up from him, so, uh, he is gonna have, he's gonna be one cure spell up on Fred. Okay, now this is interesting, so, um, so we can't really do any, well, we could, Fred could do Falls Basin if he wanted to, uh, he's choosing not to. Uh, looks like Fred is gonna go back to Bone Dungeon, and it looks like we're gonna get a full clear of Bone Dungeon, uh, right now. And T is also gonna choose to make that play to the Bone Dungeon. Uh, we do have access to the Windia area, uh, where we could get Phoebe 2, uh, an upgraded version of our Phoebe 1 ally right now. But, they can't. Um, they need to tr you cannot upgrade your character while they're in your party. You have to ditch them first. So what's mostly going to happen, um, our runner's picking up Gemini Crest there, uh, in Bone Dungeon. They're going to full clear Bone Dungeon. Oh, and a multi-key. Uh, they both have Tree Wither, so they'll probably trade Phoebe in for Kaylee 1 and get the Kaylee 1 item. Uh, after the Minotaur battle, and then head over to Windia, where they can pick up Phoebe 2 at the end. That is most likely going to be the play we're going to see. And Fred jumping over the sand pit. So that sand pit tile is two tiles long. Um, but you can jump over tile 1 to get on tile 2. You'll move forward one tile before you get pushed backwards, and then you'll be on not conveyor belt tiles. Uh, so you won't get pushed backwards. So, oh, and T doing it too. Really, the, the, really uh, the mark of experience these doing runners. You expect plays like that from our veteran, from, from runners with such veteran status. And then we're going to start seeing some life strats here. Uh, on Flamorous, uh, our runners uh, being high enough level to do it to Flamorous just like that. Uh, getting the Elixir from the chest behind Flamorous means that we will get a Kaylee 1 and a Kaylee 2 check out of our runners today. having to bully some uh, some lizards on his way out of the dungeon. All right, so that's one crystal apiece for both our runners. Uh, we're at about 15 seconds now ahead of T. Uh, on to level forest where we thought we weren't coming back. Let's see what let's see what Kaylee one has for us. Is it gonna, is it gonna be progression? I mean, we do have technical progression in the sand coin. Uh, they could also use the Gemini crest they got to warp from Aquaria over to the Fireberg area uh, and just sequence break it. Uh, Kaylee one having a Libra Crest, uh, so that's gonna lead to an item when they go back to the Aquarius section. This is very interesting. 
So now the play might be Kaylee 2 to Aquari to to Windia. BB2. Do all the easy f Windia checks. And then clean up Aquaria. And if you still don't have a river coin at that point, you can you can Gemini warp to Firebird. Alright, Fred doing rope bridge. Uh, ooh, we've got something. We've got jumbo bombs. So we've got better bombs. Flying our way through the free checks in the temple. Nothing there. Not able to do the light temple check yet. No Mobius crest. into India. What happens first? Hello, vendor. Vendor selling cat claw. Nope, we're gonna hold on to our money. We can buy more seeds with that money. Uh, downstairs to the warp. Nothing. Now into the inn. Hello, Phoebe2. Join my party, Phoebe2. And then upstairs for the Kaylee 2 check, plus no items. Getting an Apollo Helm. You like to see it, right there. Best helm in the game, fire protection. Kaylee 2 handing on a nice safety today. Uh, is Kaylee 2... Hello chat. Uh, is Kaylee 2 required to reach Giant Tree? Nope, Kaylee 2 is not required for anything. Uh, Fred pulling a mask out of Windhole Temple, that'll help him out if he goes to, uh, if he goes to the volcano, the back of the volcano. He'll be able to see the invisible enemies in the volcano interior. And there's a red chest right there on the free check. Um, on Mount Gale, and that's gonna be the Night Sword. Um, not exactly a great weapon to use, but any sword is required to progress in Ice Pyramid. So Fred can take that sword now and he can get through all of Ice Pyramid if he wants to, uh, as he goes back to Aquaria. Uh, T doing all the Windia checks too. He's gonna get his, uh, he got his Apollo Helm. He has his Phoebe too. Uh, looks like he bought the Claw. He just declaring he can just fling money all over the place. Uh, gets his mask. Uh, oh, he's gonna do the Mountain Gale check as well, so he's gonna get his... I forget what it was already at this point. Night Sword. He's gonna get his sword, so he'll have his pyramid access. Uh, we have some Wake Water action that I completely don't remember where we got it from. And... Oh! We are off to Firebird! Oh! Wake Water was vanilla! Is this even randomized? Alright, um, anyway, back on Fred's side, doing the vanilla, uh, doing the Tristan check, uh, getting Moonhelm, doesn't matter, we have Apollo, uh, going down into the Hermit. What does our Hermit have for us today? A Venus Key. Alright, so, so we've got a few things that are incentivized now on Fred's side, uh, that he can choose to do. Uh, let's see. He also doing the warp, uh, to Fireberg. Fireberg vendor only having the Thunder Spell. So we, we saw, we saw it say Thunder Seal. 
So all the wizard magic spells are considered to be seals. <clears throat> Not like clap clap orc orc seals, but like, you know, like, like, I don't know, like sealing the box seal. So both our runners probably going back to Aquaria now. Um, Fred getting a river coin and a heal spell out of Spencer. And and we're gonna save scum it, folks. We don't need a river coin where we're going. And we don't need a heal spell either. That's what that's what Fred is saying. Um So now Fred going to the back of Focus Tower. Uh T, however, deciding he's gonna do some Fireberg action. Uh three blue battlefields all in a row. Uh first item out was the was the Cupid Locket. Uh, Fred getting a blizzard spell for all of his work there. Uh, not a really good payout. And I think he's gonna take out his frustrations now on Ice Pyramid. So, this is our first chance to see Ice Pyramid without any monsters. So there are no encounters in Ice Pyramid uh, in this seed. Just jokes. Uh, there are plenty of encounters in Ice Pyramid in this seed. You're just not going to be able to see any of them. Because there's no magic mirror to reveal the enemies. So Fred is going to just walk Ice Pyramid. And if he runs into any enemies, he's simply going to just run from them if, they, if, he, if he can avoid them. Uh, Battlefield number 2 in the Fireberg section paying off with an Excalibur. And oh, this is a stacked battle. This last one is stacked. This is a full five battlefield. So, in the randomizer, uh, quality of life improvements, and one of them is reduced number of battles in battlefield. So, we've set the battlefield encounters to be anywhere between one and five, because you've got to have some, ran some randomization in your life. And this one pulled a full five, and T simply seeing a fire spell for all of his hard work. You hate to see it. Pretty sure our runner's thinking right now, you know, Seed, you could just give me all the goal mode items right up front, and let me just like jet my way through this. This is Seed number three of the day. I'm tired, I've just been bullied for the past two. Like, give me a break. Alright, uh, T back in Aquaria, using his Libra Crest, getting his Wake Water. Uh, so he is, he is now on a mission to thaw the place. Uh, Fred climbing Ice Pyramid. We're on floor four, going up to five. We do see a red chest in the Ice Pyramid treasury. Uh, running into a bunch of encounters that are simply just forced on path because the just path is one tile wide. Uh, T not one for being a safe scummer, it looks like he's gonna take his uh, goodies and walk back up the hill. Uh, oh, Fred getting a nice white spell out of the treasury. That'll help him out in his uh, upcoming battle with the uh, Ice Golem. It's no flare, but it's nice damage. Now, I wasn't watching for that moment. Did Fred intentionally fall down, or did he like... Oopsie's too fast speed his way down. Because another quality of life improvement we've made in the randomizer is your main character moves a lot faster than the vanilla. We just want to go. Uh, but what that means is that on single pathways, uh, there are no guardrails in the game. So when you walk off the, the ledge, you just fall. Um, and it's very easy to do this in Ice Pyramid. Uh, you're simply walking on ledges with no guardrails. 
and you hold the button down for too long, and shoot. Ooh, and a meteor spell. So meteor is a. We haven't seen the use of meteor yet today, folks. In three seeds, we haven't seen it, um, but we'll get to see it now. Um, meteor is a more powerful spell than white, and it's an earth element spell. So, um, uncool kids like the uh, like the Hydra fight in Lava Dome, they don't resist the earth element. So we'll be able to damage them down a lot faster than the use of Flare. Uh, you can also use Meteor on like things that are... So, so normally you use Meteor on the things that are resistant to Flare. Um, that's its main... <laughs> When you have flare available, I mean, that's basically its main purpose in life. Uh, Hydra is just one of them. Uh, you have the pallet swap version of Hydra, the, the Wyvern. Uh, in Doom Castle, in, in full Doom Castle, but we don't have full Doom Castle in this flag set. Um, I believe you can use it on Ghidra, uh, which is a mini boss for, for some pretty good damage. Um, Jin. Like I said, um, Meteor is basically an upgraded white spell, except it has an earth element. So some enemies, including the Dark King, will resist it. Yeah, so white deals less damage, but is non-elemental, exactly. is gather a mistranslation of gazer well chat um that is a that is a good question uh more of a statement than a question about it being a mistranslation so we do this from time to time uh when we're basically watching the same thing play out here uh, we asked chat uh, to put on their big brain hats and find out information for us about names and translations. Uh, we learn a lot about mythology, we learn a lot about uh, uh, different enemy names, uh, translation techniques. So that is a good question. Um, is Gather, that enemy that we saw with tentacles, um, a mistranslation of Gazer, which I believe in the Dungeon and Dragon series um, is an enemy with a big eye and uh, noodly, noodly arms. Uh, meanwhile, T doing the, the drop down in Ice Pyramid. Uh, you saw him skip the fourth floor uh, item check. We know that the white spell is in there. Uh, T does not have any sort of advanced knowledge of it. It's just a matter of after the Ice Pyramid, after the Ice Golem fight, um, there's, no, there's no exit spell yet on our, on our runners. So... He has to walk out, so he has to drop from the 6th to the 5th to the 4th floor, so he'll eventually end up in the treasury, uh, and then he doesn't need to uh, double dip the 5th floor. That's all it is. But, Meteor is a poor substitute for white. So anytime he might have gained over not having to double dip the 5th floor, uh, is gonna be lost immediately um, because the Ice Golem is strong against Earth Attacks, so he'll have to just Excalibur his way through the fight. Mm. 
you know, meanwhile, Fred here, um, doing all of the, all the East Fireberg things. And there's our flare spell behind Gemini Crest. Uh, so the only way to get that item right there, the, those two items, to check those two items, you have to have Gemini Crest and you have to warp in from the Steel Temple in the Fireburg area. So Fred right now just loaded down with firepower. And we're seeing the Lava Dome play here. Uh, so he's gonna do this in inside check on the right side. He's not gonna find, so not finding anything. He's gonna go back out. He's gonna drop down and then he's gonna get that red chest right there on the side. Noble armor for, uh, nope, no, 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 don't need noble armor. We already have Gaia's. Oh, oh, what are we looking for right now? We are looking for, we're looking for a thunder rock. That's a required item. We're looking for mega grenades, also required. <clears throat> uh, and we want to find an Aegis shield and life. So two must-haves and two want-to-haves. Uh, oh yes, we, we would like to see an exit spell just to make this speed up a little faster, but not necessary. Mm. Chanagan, hello, yes. We are in game three. Uh, I can't really describe games 1 and 2 right now. I, it just wouldn't do them justice. Uh, all I have to say is, and I hope this becomes a meme of some sort, thank heaven. Back to the action. Uh, let's see. Um, Fred is done with the right side of Lava Dome. He is on the left side now, so he's on the path to the Hydra. Not seeing anything in room one just yet. Uh, worth taking note of. Uh, T also in Lava Dome. He just threw the switch. He'll be on his path to the, to the Hydra as well. We see Fred doing a scout of two items. Uh, so that room earlier, uh, we skipped it. Uh, those are the two rooms that are blocked by Mega Grenades. We don't have Mega Grenades right now, so we can't get those items. But by scouting it, we know we don't need to come back to Lava Dome afterwards. Uh, is Fred way ahead? I really wouldn't say that. Fred is essentially like a room and a half ahead. Uh, they both have the same kit for the most part. T did not get Flare yet. Uh, I hope he remembers to check the sealed temple. With his Gemini Crest. But yes, um, it is. I mean, I think basically all of the all of the time that Fred is ahead, you could probably attribute to the safe scums that he did. But at the same time, um, 
and we've seen it here. Um, we've seen it live in front of us. The boss fights in this game, and really Hydra is where the where the RNG starts to play a factor. Um, the boss fights can really cost you a lot of time. Or the boss fights might be extremely gentle and, you know, caring. So one runner might run into like a huge roadblock and the other runner might just get away free. RNG can be mean like that. Alright, so here we go. Fred into his Hydra fight at level 15. He's got a stopwatch here. He's like literally about to be in the Hydra fight too. See, and right there. Hydra leading off with Paralyzed Breath. Uh, we don't have any sort of Paralyzed Resistance on Ben right now. Uh, Phoebe has natural paralyzed resistance. So that could cost him a turn of damage. Meanwhile on T's side, uh Hydra leading off with a uh, flare of fire breath. So that's gonna big damage. Right? And that that's but he didn't cost him a round of damage because BB just lifes Ben back up. Ben already had Meteor preset. So he just takes his turn normally and casts Meteor. Alright, so Hydra's showing up with the Thunder now uh, on Fred's side, so Hydra being under 50% of his HP, his uh, his mood switches, <laughs> his attack script switches to, uh, from the breath attacks over to the uh, single target attacks. Uh, Thunder, especially with Gaia's armor and Phoebe around, we, we like to see. Thunder is not going to deal too much damage to us. Um, Grunch, or uh, especially critical scrunches like that, um, we don't want to see that will one-shot our characters. And uh, Stone Breath, also don't want to see it, especially because neither of our runners have stone resistance. Uh, Fred getting away like a bandit right there. Um, like, I don't know how he did it just now, guys. Like, we, that might be, that might be the plot armor of the game right there for Fred, because if you remember, Fred passed up Cure and Heal, he stave scummed it out. Uh, so Fred has no way of dealing with status effects uh, on his ally. Well, items, yeah, but I don't, I, I, I don't think I've seen any of our runners pick up any brown chests across three seeds. Like there might, there might be cure potions in somebody's inventory, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, so Fred has, and we we just got to see Fred's inventory just now. Fred has no heal potion. So unless he goes and buys some, Fred has no way of dealing with uh, status effects. Uh, T in the volcano getting mega grenades uh, out of the right side of volcano. Oh, and T remembering to do the seal temple check, picking up his flare spell as well. 
All right, what do we what do we got here? So we got Fred, Fred with the uh, big Galaxy Brain play uh, in, back in the earlier seed, trading Ruben in or picking up Ruben uh, to do the mind check. T also with the same play right now, a little bit behind because uh, he stopped off at the volcano. But he has Mega Grenades and Fred does not. And if Fred does not go to the volcano, it could be a little while before we see this play. That is true too. T has the Mega Grenades now, so he'll be able to do the Aryan check at the same time he does the Ruben check right after the Jin fight. Uh, Jin trying to hit really hard, but really just a powder puff uh, with uh, with Meteor coming up. Uh, Aegis Shield, again, super nice to have. That was in the that was in the chest um, behind Jin. Uh, Steel Helm on Ruben. Don't care about it. Don't need it. But T is gonna get a bonus item off of the dad, and we will get to see it see it in a few minutes. Uh, meanwhile, Fred doing all of the North Mine checks. So he did the first check. Safe scummed it, and now he's doing the back two. Hmm. All right, Fred, where are we going next? We are going to Fireburg. Nope. Juke. We are going to Aquaria. We're going to the back of Focus Tower. No, sorry, just jokes. We went to the front of Focus Tower. Um, <clears throat> Fred can't leave Fireburg through the normal method because he safe scummed the river coin. So he has to go around. To Aquaria, uh, and then through the Sun Coin door, uh, and we saw him fade the volcano entirely just now. So he is most likely on his way to Pazuzu, uh, hoping to find Mega Grenades. Thunder Rock and life in Pazuzu's tower. So we know we know where Mega Grenades are. That's two red chests there in the Pazuzu treasury. Fred thinking his odds are gonna be pretty good. We know what those odds are right now. All right, T freeing the dad. He's gonna take the south route out of uh, out of the mine. He's already done the, the north and the middle checks. And now we see what the dad has. And if the dad has the Thunder Rock... Uh, well, we have a procedure for this. Oh, we're missing the Mobius Crest too. Oh, we're missing a lot of items. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mobius Crest. All right, where's my witch hat? Uh, okay, so now... Oh, so now the mine is hard required.
the, the prognosticators in chat coming out. We, we've seen this before. We, we, we've seen it. Uh, the nice thing about it now, though, is that there's very little left for Fred to do, sort of. It's gonna be a matter of... Does he go back for the incentivized item, right? Because Ruben's dad will always have a quest item no matter what. The guarantee. Right? Or does he does he roll odds and think to think that maybe giant tree with all with, with its a thousand checks has the goods? So the one problem with the density play is that we're seeing a lot of items right now in Kazuzu's tower. Um, the randomizer... It does not... What is it? Uh, fairness and equality are not the same things. Uh, so... Just because we see a lot of items in Kazuzu's tower doesn't mean that there's not going to be anything in Giant Tree. But the odds get a little lower. Yeah, both our runners are uh, on Team Norma today. It's kind of interesting. Uh, both our runners showing their humane side and saying that the children are our future. So Fred about two floors and roughly five required enemy fights in front of T right now. The treasury has the Venus shield, don't need it. And the steel sword, also don't need it. an interesting play. Fred just sent meteors at the gargoyles, but they are strong against Earth. Normally we just send flare. That was probably a misclick. Yeah. So, note to our new players. Um, life. The life spell is a full cure, a full restore when cast in battle. Um, but when you are on the overworld or the map screen, and or the the normal menu screen, and you cast life on a character, it's only a full cure. It does not heal status effects. Only heal will heal your status effects on the map. Alright, so we have a bird on the second floor. Um, by locking the elevators in place, the bird is going to go upstairs by one to the third floor. Because you have to be between the floors, you can't be on the floors. Um, but this is easy. The center stairwell right there will take him to the center of the third floor. He will just simply dragon claw his way across. The other way, thank you. Uh, and he will be in his bird fight. Bird fight, pretty simple. Um, five rounds of dealing damage. Psych shield will go up, and then you just have to time 
and you have to just time your psych shield hits um, as they come up and down. Uh, psych shield, unique Pazuzu attack, basically cast Reflect on himself, uh, and then he gets a free attack afterwards. Uh, okay, this is not gonna be good. So, chat, um, you might be getting a preview of, of some terrible things to come here. Remember now, no cure, no heal on Fred's side of the equation. Um, Pazuzu has Stone Beak. Uh, and he can use it on either character, just like how Dark King can use Golden Web on either character. Fred absolutely needs heal potions or a life spell uh, to take petrification out of the equation. Uh, T now into his Pazuzu fight. Um, so, we now can see how quickly one of these boss fights can just change how things work. You can be minutes ahead, floors ahead, uh, only for especially this boss, this bird, uh, to just tell you, nope, stand back in line. Because remember guys, like, okay, so now we're getting, we're now we're getting a soft reset out of Fred, so... Fred pushing the reset button, um, enticing the RNG to do better things. I approve. The other thing could be that he's low on seeds. Um, so one thing about the, the very friendly redo option in Mystic Quest, Right, you can just retry the fight immediately, not having to do anything else. If you burn items during the fight, they do not come back to you. Uh, if you retry the battle. Alright, T now into phase 2 of his Pazuzu fight. Nice crit there out of Excalibur. Uh, and oh, Pazuzu's like shooting himself into phase 3. Uh, oh, he'll get a nice cure from the auto AI of Phoebe, sending a flare Pazuzu's way. He'll be at full strength uh, going in into this phase. And that is a down bird on T's side. So T will light his fourth crystal, he'll get his sky coin, uh, but we are now on a thunder rock hunt. So chat, we get to play our game again. Where's the thunder rock and what kind of ugly sequence are we going to need to get it? We've seen a lot of checks already.
There's not too many places where this Thunder Rock can be. I like this Cage Temple check because we have a Mobius Crest. It's a very quick one item check and then we can just exit out. I think, I think we go into the forest. I think we full clear the forest into the tree. I think that's the play. <clears throat> because if it's not in the forest and it's not in the tree, um, well, there's a lot of mini bosses that we faded that we need to go back and say hello to. So, who's for Thunder Rock on Squidite? We have an item in the back of the forest. I think we saw that one. I think we saw a magic ring. I don't know, but it's also been three seeds, so th th that's that very well could be the third magic ring I'm seeing. Uh, meanwhile, on Fred's side, we are we are still in the Pazuzu fight. We are in another flavor of the Pazuzu fight. T going around. So so in the vanilla game, you have to go around the horn like that to get to the final stop uh, to take, get to the second floor. But you can actually just dragon claw your way across uh, straight away uh, from the upper right to the center. Alright, and there's our Thunder Rock, and that is go for T at 55 minutes. Th Thunder Rock on the second floor of the giant tree. So this is really a demonstration of boss RNG just saying no. I mean, yes. We did, we did save scum the heal spell out. That could have helped us a little bit in a few, but really this is just bad R. This is just bad boss RNG. Uh, and we have another petrification on Phoebe and another and another reset. Uh, and... Alright, Fred, what are we doing? We are out! Okay, so Fred is probably gonna pick up some heal, heal potions or a heal spell now. Meanwhile, T has freed the ship, he is on it, and he is on his way to go talk to Captain Mac. Now into Doom Castle basement. 
Fred knows exactly where Pazuzu is, so he's gonna go on a treasure hunt. He's gonna look for some items. He's gonna find some items. Uh, he's gonna find the Thunder Rock very, very shortly. And T on his way into the Dark King fight. Fred is going to be on the climb in the giant tree, so he's in the third floor, uh, cutting away at the mushroom population. But again, really, really just rough day for Fred uh, and Mega Grenade. Like, he's still on the Mega Grenade hunt. Uh, oh, we have a chest back there. What do we have in the third floor of the tree? We have Magic Mirror. Like, that's, this is two seeds now, where Fred cannot get Mega Grenades to save his life. It's, it's a rough time. Uh, T into his Dark King fight phase two. Uh, level 20, we've got five wizard magic charges, no life, so we do have to play defensively. But Dark King is manageable with all the safeties in place, except life. And, okay, so while we're in this fight, um, something to point out, so, some of you in chat mentioned it uh, earlier as well. Um, our runner's using custom sprites, so T over here with a nest sprite, and Fred using the uh, original fighter from Final Fantasy 1. So on the Mystic Quest randomizer site, um, there are a host of sprites to choose from. And if you should not happen to find uh, one that you like, you can actually go and inject your own. So the randomizer site does allow you to upload your own sprite into the into the into the seed. Uh, getting it cleared for everyone to use, um, there's a process for that. You can ask about it on the on the Discord. But you are we welcome you. Uh, to use your own custom art. Oh, chat! Did I get it wrong? Is that a is that a Pokemon trainer? My bad. The, the, in my okay, so that look that's a Pokemon ball. That, I agree. That's a that's a definitely a Pokeball. These sprites can look very scrunched up too. Hey, and we found our life spell. Fred found life at the top of the tree. So he if he can get his way to a uh, volcano. Uh, at some point, or I mean, he can take on Pazuzu right now. He's got life, so he's got that full heal and the status heal in the battle. Um, just as we saw Pazuzu being being a bully, the Dark King could very, very well also be quite un uh, unkind. And that is the combo you don't want to see. So laser to Ben, a uh, golden web to Phoebe, 
Dark King will normally move before Phoebe gets a chance to attack. Uh, the Golden Web laser combo is definitely the one-two uh, hit KO right there. And there's nothing you can do. All you can do is sit there and be like, come on, Dark King. That's not cool. So that is an unfortunate wipe. Uh, it looks like T was about maybe midway through phase 3 on, on that one. Really hard to guess though. Alright, so let's see, what, what do we have here? We have T in phase 2 of the Dark King fight. Uh, definitely playing it safe uh, with no with no life on, on T. Um, Fred into the Pazuzu fight. Life looking a little bit better, uh, especially because now that he has a, a life spell. Uh, he can recover out of Phoebe getting stoned or... Oh. Looked like Fred lost track of where we were on the Psych Shield count. It's okay though. Easy to recover out of that. Okay, Golden Web on Phoebe. So this is where the heal spell, because we don't have life, uh, is super critical to keeping this fight going. No heal, no life, and you are praying to RNG gods that, that the Dark King does not send a Golden Web Phoebe's way. Yeah, and so there are heal potions too that you can pick up right outside the Dark King's room. Uh, the Dark King has a bunch of seeds, but he also has heal potions, he has cure potions, and I believe he has arrows uh, in the event that your ally has run out of arrows. All 99 of them. Alright, Fred, out of his Pazuzu fight, he's gonna light his fourth crystal and he's gonna get his Sky Coin. So he is he is a Mega Grenade Mobius Crest moment away from Go Mode. We know where they are, so they're really nearby to each other. Uh, T getting spider kitted right there, but having a full kit plus level 20 means that he can absorb that hit no problems. Alright, and phase 4 now of the Dark King. Mega Flare with the fire resistance is no problem.
silver red web on Ben, no problem. That's the second flare spell. All right, probably one more f flare spell uh, for the victory. Uh, Fred going through the volcano, he should find his uh, Mega Grenades pretty soon. And there we have time on T side uh, coming in right there with an official race time of 108.15. You did, the, you did the fantastic job. Just luck was on my side. Oh, and here we have our runners, GG's T and Fred. Yeah, GG, I just said it uh, to Fred already. Uh, luck was a bit on my side today. That's the way of this game, though. It's, you know, as I was saying to you, it, this game can easily swing one way or the other, and, yeah. you know, clearly you put yourself in position to win when the luck did roll your way, so. Great race. Yeah. Uh, I'm really happy that at least my play got better during the race because I'm not happy with my first ra uh, run actually because it was very sloppy. I got really tilted uh, towards the end because I had really bad battle RNG at the start and then I did make, started making really sloppy mistakes too. So I was really surprised when I uh, actually won it because yeah, you obviously got a bit unlucky uh, with the route working out. Yeah, I just went into the uh, I just went into uh, Windia from the top and just somehow mentally got out of my normal pathing because normally I come in from the bottom and the very first thing I check is the lovely so uh, vendor. Know. And so nice. just coming down from the bottom, I think I had Thunder Rock and I got all like, okay, this is my this is where I usually finish, so uh, yeah. I'm done here now. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, I, okay. I, for, I forgot to push the lever in floor 2 of Pazuzu's tower. Oh no! And, and got him floor 1 and then I was really surprised when he moved up again. Ouch. <laughs> well, mistakes like that. Uh, we've all, the, we've all done stuff like that though, that's the that, thing. That, so. That's why I'm really not happy with the first race, even though I won it. Understandable. Uh, uh yeah. Second race was a bit better, and third race actually, I think I played pretty well, and my rod also worked out perfectly in the third race. Everything came together just as it as if it was laid out for uh, the round. Yeah, no, it was like it was really uh, neck and neck, especially uh, I think in the f I, these the three seeds are kind of blended together already to me for me to turn into like one mega seed. Um, oh yeah, they definitely. When you do them all back to back, it does that all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. But all I have to say is, like today, Fred, like you, you made, you made the plays and the gambles that you did, and the mega grenades were just not your friend at all. Nope, they just kept saying, "Yep, we're done. We're done with yeah. you today." So that's all good. Uh, uh, in the second run, um, I think you just uh, went straight forward with the. Uh, seat and didn't check too much out of the main dungeons because I did a lot of checks on the side there because we didn't have a lot going on at the start so I thought maybe it's a good thing to check prep or some uh, or dip a bit deeper into volcano and so on. But, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure first seed was as you said. Yeah, exactly. I just uh, was able to, you know, pretty much everything ended up being pretty much on the path and I stayed mostly on path and it worked yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah, and then the in the third C and third race, yeah. Especially I was, it was when I when I found the elixir in the bone dungeon. So I had the, uh, the route of uh, after getting the sand coin, going back to Aquaria, doing a couple of things there, a couple of free checks, and then going back to because we already had the tree with her at that point, going back to Foresta to do the Bone Dungeon with Phoebe and then switching to Kaylee and doing Minotaur just. And then when I saw the Elixir uh, in the Bone Dungeon, I felt like, my god, this is just falling to place perfectly. <laughs> yeah, that worked yeah. out very nicely. I will agree with that. Yeah. that that's so. pretty much how the seed went, too. I mean, that the first seed had what that that logic chain was six items deep uh in the second 
second seed was more straightforward, I think, than anything else. Yeah, second but seed even, was super yeah. straightforward. Yeah, agreed. But even this third seed, like, you, like you guys crushed my hopes at the last minute for a sun coin start. You, you guys started off very early with that sun coin, and I thought for sure we were going to win you and having a hard day of it. Oh, I was terrified of that, especially after that one seed that uh, RPG and I had to re-roll because yeah. of oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, that was your almost. Oh, it was yours! Oh, so, yeah. so it's your, yeah, yeah, so it it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll go with that, sure. <laughs> He's uh, pulling all the uh, early wind and seeds to him. Uh, yeah, uh, that's why I did the battlefield first. I think it was on the battlefield there, the uh, sand yeah. coin. Oh no, the, the river last. coin. The river coin. And yeah, I did the battlefield. I think I did the battlefield first there because I wanted to know if I have to dive bone dungeon because we started with bombs. So I wanted to know before going into you into the bone dungeon if we have to dive it or not. Yeah. So smart call. That's a that's a heads up play. That's smart. Because yeah, obviously you want to grind, especially if you don't have a big attack option. I think we had uh, Titan's eggs uh, early on. So yeah. it wasn't that bad. It wouldn't have been that bad to do flame strikes uh, early, but yeah, even though even with the titan strikes, you want to have a few levels under your belt, so you do it a bit more damage, and so you don't get one shot ideally, because that's always uh, the scary part. Uh, uh, that's too because flame strikes can scale up on his attacks really hard and deal over two hundred damage with his attacks, and then it's really painful. All right, so uh, let's see. T, you'll be moving on. So you you get to move on to the finals. Uh, you get you get to uh, oh, yeah. verse oh. Hevinks. Yeah, but that will be that will be fun. <laughs> oh, I hope I, I hope we well, I can make it the fun final because the show uh, Hennix did last night was I I think it was the best performance I've ever seen uh, in the randomizer. Because he played really fast, really crisp routing, really good execution on everything. Besides the ducking, maybe I think he did one little mistake at the ducking that led to a wipe, actually. So that's maybe where there's a little chance, but otherwise, it was a nearly perfect, perfect run. And yeah. Uh, and don't sell yourself short. I mean, you uh, are clearly a very good player. So you know, you're going to be, be you're going to make a battle. Be. I hope I can make it a, a good battle and a nice uh, viewing exper experience because I think uh, he is really, really good here. As I said, I, I think I think all of chat will agree with me when when I say that both of you put on an extremely good show for us today. Yeah, I think uh, today was really fun, and the Absolutely. second race actually was kind of close too because I was already on the stairs when he finished, so. That's probably six minutes behind or so. Of yeah, that was pretty it. close. Um, Actually, yeah, um, so... during especially in the third seed, T, you were probably in chat was chat was being chat, uh, but you were probably about like two or three screens all the time, consistently behind Fred, and then you both got into the Pazuzu fight, and that's where it all turned. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm quite confident in the, in my boss fights in general, uh, but yeah, sometimes Pazuzu is just Pazuzu, and uh, what happened to Fred there is really, really rare. Oh yeah, and no, so, uh, yeah. That, that shouldn't happen at all. Uh, that that, uh -oh. really, that gives you one wipe because of an unfortunate crit or so, or in petrification. That that can happen no. to Pazuzu, but uh, four times in a row is really. Well, really rare. it was it was on me. I well, I rejected. I decided to try to save thirty seconds by like, okay, I'll come back later to, uh, you know, to Spencer, when uh, when I saw that the you know whatever it was like an axe and heal or something like that, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. said, okay, I'm just gonna come back later. I'll be fine, and yeah. you know, I wasn't fine. I I value the healing spell actually really high. Unless you have life already, yeah, um, it's uh, it's really helpful if your partner gets confused or petrified. It's also helpful it, if your partner gets poisoned to just uh, remove the time loss to uh, due to poison takes when you have fights going more than one turn. 
Oh, agreed. Yeah. yeah, no, it usually does. As I said, it's just me trying to hyper, uh, basically trying to hyper, uh, you know, manage my time, yeah, you know, yeah, my yeah. time because I, know, I knew I, I have no I time to spare against you. So yeah, the, the walk back out of Spencer's always thing you want to save. Yeah, I don't know with the speed up in the randomizer. Uh, it probably isn't even that that much slower than resetting because resetting also takes a bit of time. So. It's true. Yeah, yeah, so all all of the time that, that Fred pretty much saved by save scumming out the river coin, he save scummed out he cure and heal. Uh he gave it all back in Pazuzu, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah that's really unfortunate because yeah, the life spell was well hidden in the seat and then uh these things. We we did find the we did find the life spell though. Fred found it. Oh yeah, yeah. he said, he said he told me it was on top of the tree, <laughs> so yeah. Really, really well hidden. It's really, uh, really rare to get lost uh, there. Well, wow. so as soon as we had it, first try uh, on the second try on the second try. So I was like, okay, that's all it is. Yeah. I get to learn from this, and you know, next tournament I'll come after you. Hopefully, we get a rematch, and uh, we'll try again. Uh, I would really look forward to that one. I think all of uh, all of us I think look forward all, to that one. I think. I must say, all runners uh, of this tournament really uh, showed their stuff and had uh, really had really good moments, had really interesting threats at some points at least. So it was really interesting tournament so far. And yeah, we I don't think we even had one really uh, bad race or just one-sided race, at least from what I've seen. Yeah, um, no, all everyone I think in this tournament we're we're killing it. So yeah. it's been a great really tournament here. Really good. Anything for our viewers before we uh sign out? Uh Fred, we'll start with you. Again, just thank you, Speed Gaming, for putting this on. Thank you for uh doing the uh commentary here for all this. I mean it's been a marathon here that you've had to deal with, so uh thank you for that and thank you for uh, Wildham doing all the tracking and stuff there behind the scenes, um, you know, for FFR for putting this on. And just again, great race again, uh, T, and look forward to seeing the uh, finals because that's going to be a blast to watch. Yeah, I also want to thank uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer for helping us out with the channel again. I want to thank uh, Happings for hosting it and setting things up today even though he wasn't at home from what i've heard so really big props for his commitment during during the whole tournament basically he's helping out here and there so a uh, big thank you to Hebbings. and yeah also thank you to you head thanks to um Waltham for setting things up today and for commentating and tracking and so on uh thanks to all the other organizers behind the scenes of the tournament really really well done tournament and even though it's really hard sometimes to uh, organize the times and the streams for that uh, we or you did a fantastic job of that and uh, putting together such a tournament tournament is no easy feats and yeah thanks for speed gaming to having us even though we are not there today but most of the time they were able to provide us a channel and help us with the setup so thanks a lot to them Thanks a lot to the viewers uh, who make this much, much more fun than when we are just uh, between ourselves. And yeah, thanks to all the participants uh, of the tournament who filled this uh, tournament with great content. As I said, all great runners in this tournament. Really nice performances out of them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the final. Best of luck, man. Uh, we'll definitely all be tuning in to catch that. So on behalf of uh, Speed Gaming and Final Fantasy Randomizer, big thanks, by the way, to the Final Fantasy Randomizer community uh, lending us their channel uh, today uh, to be able to stream on this. Um, follow the runners, follow the crew. Uh, their links are there in the chat. Um, if you want to get started with the Mystic Quest Randomizer, head on over to www.ffmqrando.net to get started and click on that link there in the disc and get that Discord invite. Uh, thanks to Ekamot, our tracker, uh, for being on top of it the whole time. Clicking on all those uh, icons and making sure 
we all knew what was going on and Wildham for running the stream for the last four and a half hours uh, he, he is our entire restreaming crew so on behalf of everybody big thanks for hanging out with us today um, stay tuned we'll have that uh, schedule set up pretty soon and we'll let you all know when the finals are being held until then take care of yourselves and bye bye <laughs>